Hey, James. Hey, James Patterson. I'm going to need you to walk over into that room, <laughs> into the corner. Do you see? No, wave over. Right. Way over there. Way over there in that corner. First, I mean, mix yourself a drink with your with your whiskey, with your bourbon that you love <laughs> so much. And then sit the fuck down. <laughs> I'm recording. I'm recording. Yay, me too. Already recording today, today, today. <laughs> I've had a day. Me sounds too. Like you, I know. It sounds like you have had one too. Um, Guys, it's Monday. Happy it's Monday. Happy Monday. We're, We're recording a day early because Busy still has press going on for Girls 5 Eva. Are you watching it? If you aren't, why not? Um, I, I, this is, I think, the last thing I'm going to do for Girls 5 Eva. I think this is it. And really, it's just because I was supposed to, it's Seth Meyers. And it, yeah. It, I was supposed to do it earlier. Right. And you had COVID and, or something? No, just it, it was just like it for whatever. I don't remember why, but I, I couldn't do that date. But we love Seth Meyers, so we want to... Yeah, we had to make it happen. Yeah. Oh, good. But you're having um, a day? Well, no, it's not like a day. It's just like I'm having... <laughs> like It's been a day. Like, it's been a whole... It's been... It's three o'clock. For you, Monday, yeah. Monday, June 13th. And boy, oh boy, I made a list of, <laughs> thing, of things to talk to you about because... I just was like, this, we got to get into it because I'm not wasting fucking time any longer. (laughs) Um, Okay. So the day started off with me coming into Casa Kismet. Well, I dropped the kids off at school. That's not a euphemism for anything else. Like I literally (laughs) like took them to school and I dropped them off. And then... I came into Casa Kismet and I'm like, oof, it's really hot. And now, you know, this doesn't have air conditioning in here yet. And yeah. it's a little bit tricky because this place is an older building. And so they want you to get, case- they have casement windows. They're not windows that go up and down like normal guys. They're, They're like, like crank out old timey windows. And, um, Units, okay, and so you have to get these like casement air conditioning units, and then I don't know. It seems a little complicated for me. Yeah, but you know what? I'm like, I can handle this shit. I basically have put it off, but like, <laughs> I today was like, I really got to do it. But it's not that I've put it off. It's just that like every time I've gone to do it, first my credit cards weren't working. Right. Right then whatever. doesn't matter, guys. This is a me problem. But so I was like, okay, I'm gonna just order. I looked online and I looked on Home Depot and it was like, oh, I could get one delivered to the apartment tomorrow. I'm like, fantastic. And then I'll figure out installation or I'll use one of those apps that should advertise on our podcast, but they don't (laughs) yet. So I'm not gonna use their fucking name. Right. And I'll just, I'll like figure it out. I can figure it out. So I buy the thing. And then I get, and I, it's like, thank you, Blake. Cause I put it under Blake's name. Right. Of course. Yeah. And it's like, thank you, Blake. Your delivery will be tomorrow to the completely wrong address that I no. put in. That was like literally the first place we stayed. I don't know what happened. My brain just like it just had broke. like a melty. Just broke. It was too hot. I couldn't sleep this morning. And and I mean this morning, like I was up at like the crack, like 4.30. Yeah. yeah. And then I was just looking on Twitter and was very upset about I got very upset about Proud Boys. Yeah, they're they're a thing to be upset about. <laughs> they're really 
the fucking worst, those guys. Like, those guys are exactly why I hate specifically white men, but, like, men. (laughs) Or because, like, because those guys have existed in so many shapes and forms in our entire lives, right? Like, then they just decided to give themselves a stupid fucking name, which also, by the way, boys have been doing since forever. (laughs) You know, like, like there was always like, in high school, there was always like some crew, you know, and it would be like the, the B, B cool crew or whatever it was, (laughs) you know, and then in the senior yearbook, like they would take out a page and it was like, just these dumb fucking dudes posing (laughs) and like they would be the ones that would like you know dress up like like do the thing at the at the homecoming pep rally where they would like put balloons under their shirts for boobs and like make fun of the cheerleaders do you know what I'm saying are you following me I'm following you yeah I'm following and so like to see these motherfuckers these little fucking pieces of shit like interrupt like drag queen story time at a public library. Right. Like they have, they're armed like these motherfuckers like standing outside of, um, you know, abortion clinics, like with getting into a U-Haul to, yes, the, the U-Haul to like, to disrupt like a small town pride parade. Like get the fuck out of here, motherfuckers. Like, by the way, this is where I'm like, Okay, like, give them an island. Can we just do, like, is there, what happened to Johnny Depp's island? (laughs) I'm not kidding. Can we just be. Well, it can, they can go to Johnny Depp's island. Could they just, could it just be the proud, can we just get it somehow? Could there be some sort of thing where it's like, okay, yes. You know what, white supremacists, motherfuckers, you proud boys? Great. Go. (laughs) Start your own fucking civilization on Johnny Depp's island and leave me the fuck alone and leave my body alone, leave my kid alone, leave my friends alone, leave the people who want to live their lives the way that they want to live the, live them in peace fucking alone. Get right. out of here. Right. I don't, I wouldn't even mind like at this point who's will who would be willing to give up a, like their state. What's like the <laughs> mo- I'm not kidding. What's the most sparsely populated state in the union? I feel like it's got to be like Wyoming. Great. Right? So listen, rich people, listen, all you fucking movie stars that bought compounds in Wyoming, you're going to have to give them up because they should, we just got to roll it over, roll it over to those motherfuckers. And anyone who needs to get out of Wyoming, we will get you out. I mean, obviously that's a problem probably because, you know, it's all stolen land anyway. Right. 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 But like, if there was some way that we could, just put them in Elon Musk's penis and shoot them into space. Because <laughs> also, like, just FYI, dudes, like, we don't want you around either. Like, I know you fucking hate me and you want me dead because I've gotten the death threats from you. I have read them. I've right. seen them. They've arrived. Don't right. worry about it. Right. But guess what? We don't fucking want you around either. And I'm not like in a place anymore where I'm like, let's bleep, bleep, bleep. It's, there's no more fucking both sides in this shit. It's like what I said with the kid and crying and birdie. And fuck that. I'm done with these fucking boys. They're boys. They've named themselves boys. They're fucking children. Right. I hate them. I want to make three points in quick succession. First, this, please, can we stop after this week and what we've seen? Can we stop saying that this is the last gasp of the old? It's not. They're fucking 23 years old. Right. We're we're making new ones. The the racist, misogynist, bigot factory is making new models. Oh, it continues. And by the way, they can all go. Like, I... I don't give a fuck. The second thing that I want to say about them is that they don't exist without the cooperation of a lot of people who might not be putting 
khaki pants and tactical gear on to go disrupt pride, but they really exist with like the tacit cooperation of a lot of people who have said like, don't overreact to these people. They're free to do what they want to do. It's their right to protest these things. All of these things, technically true, but Anyone that ever told me I needed to relax or not get hysterical over folks like this, I would love an apology. Like, I, I would love to hear, like, oh, you, you know what? You were right about that shit. I, you know what I want? I want a fucking apology for every goddamn time in our lives since we were babies, since we were fucking little girls that someone has told someone in a position of authority has told us that they were just joking that they that we need to we need to just we should calm down a little bit and like can't we just understand that it's not that big of a deal and that, and that yeah we're and all we're entitled over, yeah to, to our opinion and yeah. you're overreacting and yeah some opinions are um bad wrong some are wrong <laughs> Some are fucking wrong. Some are wrong opinions. And uh, when they call into question the humanity of our fellow humans, that's how we know that the opinions are wrong and morally bad and that we don't have to give equal time to them or respect to them. So that's that has where I've been for a long time. The third thing I want to point out is I don't know that giving them an island would do the trick. I don't know that giving them Wyoming would do the trick because I think for them, the joy is in the conflict. They really feel like they're doing something. I don't think... you know what? You know what? They're not. I know. I know. But I really think that this is just... A group of people who have failed to find their place in the world, and rather than find a place where they belong, they want to make it so that everybody else has to conform to what they think is, it's, I don't know, I just think, like, we were talking about gossip recently, and drama, men are some of the most dramatic Fucking people, (laughs) dramatic bitches that have ever lived. And I think they just like it. I think it's, you know, it's not that different than, you know how people are like really into reenacting like civil wars or whatever, which I think is like, okay, it's, you know, I guess you're like a history buff. I think it's kind of weird to want to relive that. Uh, I mean, I don't know. I don't know. But... I think this is, like, a hyper-amplified version of of that. Like, I think that they've been dying to play war their whole lives. They've been dying to play good guy, bad guy their whole lives. They think they're the good guys, and they're very excited that they have access to tactical gear and U-Hauls. Which, by the way, I feel kind of bad for U-Haul because I feel like people were like, how did U-Haul let this happen? And I'm like, well, I don't know. <laughs> U-Haul's never really grilled me about what I was planning to move in a U-Haul. So I suppose I could have packed it full of white guys in tactical gear and driven it somewhere. But yeah, I don't I don't think it's U-Haul's fault necessarily. No. It's like fucking toxic masculinity's fault. It's Ugh. like our fucking culture of like, war and like glorifying these fucking dudes with like their yeah their tactical gear like they're dressing up you know what I mean yeah like they have a problem with fucking drag queens they're in drag (laughs) they are in drag (laughs) they are play acting they are pretending at a thing that they are not. They are in drag, these motherfuckers. Proud boys are, wear drag. Right. There. That's your fucking sentence. Fuck you, proud boys. Fuck you. To solve a problem that they invented. Yeah. Busy. I was trying to relax over the weekend, and so I was catching up on some shows, some, like, true crime dramas, and 
uh, at every turn, I was like, oh, my God, no matter what it was, no matter what it was, all I could see was like the patriarchal. I was radicalized by my brilliant friend, I think, by watching it. And I was just like, (laughs) every problem in this drama, in this crime drama boils down to the patriarchy. Literally everything in the fucking world, except for the fact, well... I was going to say, except for the fact that I or, I ordered the air conditioning unit to the wrong address. But if I wasn't so fucking spun up about <laughs> stupid the, Proud Boys hiding in U-Hauls to terrorize people just have, trying to live their fucking lives. Might have remembered maybe your address. I would have put the right address in. As it stands, I, then I texted Blake, my new assistant, and was like, fuck, dude, like... I did this stupid thing. Can you try to call Home Depot and change it? But he didn't respond. And I couldn't remember if he was somewhere or whatever. So then I was like, I should just, I'll just do it. Cause I don't, it was supposed to come tomorrow. So I don't want to like, whatever. So I get on the phone with this nice lady from a call center and she's like, okay, I'm just going to have to go ahead and call the, Home Depot directly that um, you that is distributing it um, and we'll change it that way. How long do you think I was on the phone with her on hold? I don't. It was it an hour. It was 50 minutes. Wow. And then she came back. Well, she kept coming back and checking in. And I was like, is this a thing? Like, do I need to be on the phone for this while you're on the phone on hold with them? Like, I'm confused what exactly is happening here but I'm like I'm okay with it like if we can get it figured out but do I is this a thing I need to be here for yeah she was like yeah because I have no way of letting you know and I was like oh god okay so I'm still on hold minutes are ticking by and then she comes back and she's like I cannot explain to you how frustrating this is they just hung up on me oh no and I was like oh my god the something has become the something, whatever. <laughs> the teacher has become the, the te- student. The teacher has become the student. Okay, well, that's so the anyway, thing with, we, that's the thing with um, customer service reps is you know they've all been through exactly, you know, because everybody has to deal with customer service. Yeah, she was very sweet. But then I guess the Home Depot store hung up on her. Sure. And then she was like, couldn't believe it. And then I was like, well, I actually have to go because I had the parenting classes, you know? Yeah. So I got to get off. the. F- I can't wait any longer, you know, basically yeah. for her to call back. So, but thank you. And she's like, I could just give you the phone number to that store. And I was like, let's do that. Why don't we just do that? <laughs> so she gave me the phone number to the store. I hung up. I called Blake. And I was like, hey, so I, I, tr- I texted you, but like about the Home Depot thing, I'm not sure what I couldn't, uh, you know, and he was like, oh, I've been on the phone with them for the last app a- for the last hour. Oh, he also no. was on the phone with them for the last for an hour. And he I was like, this is this is not a great use of our time. Blake, you have to like just respond. Give me a thumbs we'll up. We'll do. Thumbs just, up. Th- just a, I just need an acknowledgement. I just need a, I just need yes. one of those like like. Like yes. my text. Yes. Um, he's like, oh, yeah, you're right. Okay, okay, I'll do that from now on. I mean, there are definitely things, you know? He's never been an assistant before, so that's that's a thing. But well, so then that, any- I was just thinking that uh, most assistants have never been an assistant before because it's an entry-level job, but I really think there needs to be an assistant school out there because I've been dealing with a lot of assistants lately, and... Um, it's a it's a lot. It's a lot of people just doing this job, and no one. I was so lucky because when I was an assistant, I really got a thorough education in how to do it. And I think a lot of people are just kind of put on a desk and left on their own. So yeah, I mean, I'm gonna work when I when my brain clears up some space. I will go through some things so that like <laughs> <laughs> I will, I will, I promise. But anyway. Then he was like, called me back 10 minutes later or whatever. And he's like, you're not going to believe this. 
they didn't even have the air conditioning unit. They don't know why it was, it, why it sold to you online. Oh no. And I was like, what? And he's like, so they just canceled the whole order. I was like, are you fucking kidding me? Cool, cool, cool. So now I'm trying to find, uh, and I, look, because it's like the special casement window unit and it's not just like a regular window unit. Yeah. It's weirdly more difficult. Sure. And they are rarer. Sure. Is it like the rolling unit that goes on the floor? No, 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 no. Okay. You can get one. It goes in a window. They were they remove a pane of glass. Understood. Okay. And they put the unit in and then... Lord knows, Casey. Fucking Lord knows. Hopefully okay. it will work. But anyway... That's I'm still that, hot. That's a lot. That's a lot. Oh, it, because wait. you're like up too. like heat rises. You're not on the. But you know what, though? But you know what, though? <laughs> but you know what I do have to say? What? The cross breeze in Casa Kismet is magic. Oh, good. Good. I had our friend Katie Storino over and we ordered some Thai food and watched uh, Fire Island. And she could not. She couldn't get over the cross breeze. Oh, good. And yeah, she would so, know. She's yeah. like a real New York City gal. So here's all I'm saying is that like, whatever for whatever reason, the the location of this apartment, when I open all the windows, I mean, it can get, even when it's very hot out, can be kind of nice and breezy up here. Yeah. Okay. But when I walked in today, because I had had all the windows closed because there was a thunderstorm last night. Sure. It was hot. And muggy and the, and it smelled weird in the kitchen. And I noticed that yesterday when I was, I had stopped by here with Simran, with my friend Simran, who's in town working just to like show her Casa Kismet and blah, 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 blah. And also just to get away from our children. Um, (laughs) But that's, guys, don't worry about that. Uh, and I noticed it yesterday. It like, and I was like, it's weird. I was like, oh, it must be the, tr- like, maybe I need to take the trash out or something. But it was weird. So I took, so today while I was like dealing with all the air conditioning thing and whatever, and I, t- I took the trash down and threw it away. And then Mark called me. Oh, and then we had our parenting class on yeah. Zoom. And then Mark called me after to talk about some plans because the kids are like almost out of school for the, I mean, just what the fuck is happening? I don't know. I know. Whew. And so he was, we're on the phone and I was like, it smells weird in this kitchen. And like, I can see your face already. You're like, you don't even know what's about to happen. I'm scared to know. It wasn't great. So then, and I was like, I took the trash out. Like, that's not and then I looked in the toaster oven slash fryer, like, or air, air fryer, fryer thing. Yeah. Okay. Well, I had left two weeks ago. It's been two weeks. Because it was Friday. It wasn't this past Friday. It was the Friday before. So not quite two weeks. A week and a half. Going on two weeks. Going on two weeks. I had heated up some item. (laughs) And I left it. I forgot about it. I don't know know why. Do you know what item? Could you even remember? Was it identifiable? Are you ready? It was some sort of omelet. Like a frittata. Oh, no. In a little... In a little thing. What was the... Was... There were maggots. Was maggots. <gasps> maggots. Okay, maggots. maggots. Sure, mm-hmm. sure. Which I've never had experience with, um, and it was that's disgusting. Traum- it's the, traumatizing. I was a little tra- bit. I was traumatized. The um, I like managed to grab the item <clears throat> out and like put it in a bag and throw it down the chute. Yeah. And then I just, the, and then I just, I sprayed like the kitchen Lysol stuff inside of it. You should have just and, air fried those fuckers. 
Well, and I just put it on the. I just put it on my balcony. <laughs> I just can't. I couldn't you deal with it. It was it. so gross. I was like gagging, yeah. and I couldn't deal with it. And like, I just put it on the balcony, and I was really grossed out. And Gina was like, "What's happening?" And I was like, "Stay away from there." <laughs> and I just like, I was like, "Of course, of course." And I think, I don't think I'm ever going to use that toaster oven again. That air, it was a cute one too. I think it's done. But you just, it's it's made, as your mom would say. As Barbara Phillips would say, it's been made. <laughs> <laughs> so it's so gross. And I was like, I can't, I was like, why are you disgusting, Busy? Why, what are you like a? What is wrong with me? Like, what? Why did I heat some food up and then just leave it and then didn't even eat it? What did I even eat? What was I thinking? A frittata, no less. (laughs) (laughs) It's so disgusting. (laughs) And the maggots were so tiny and disgusting and they were crawling everywhere. They're so gross and I'm so grossed out. Oh my gosh. I'm glad they didn't turn into flies yet. That would have been a bad infestation to get out of your house. God, I'm going to throw up. <laughs> if you opened it and it just like they flew out like bats. That's that like would a have fucking been crazy. horror movie. A horror movie. I'm literally like in yellow jackets, but like my own version of it. <laughs> but your own <laughs> office apartment. Oh my, my own gosh. office apartment version of. I'm sorry that happened because I know you don't like gross things. I don't like it. And probably, wait, was your smell gone with COVID? Is that like why you didn't smell it sooner? No. Oh, interesting. Huh. I don't, I don't think so. Like I, I just think it wasn't really like, I just think it took a long time. It wasn't, it wasn't a, a big frittata. Yeah. It was like definitely... Small-ish. It took a while to colonize. Oh, my God. That's terrible. It was disgusting. Oh, my god! So, I had, like, the... In quick succession, it was, like, woke up to a bunch of, like, stories about fucking douchebags that I've hated my whole life. The Proud Boys. <laughs> Ruining a thing I've loved my whole life. Gay pride. <laughs> or trying to. Attempting to ruin it. Right, in many right. different ways. Not succeeding. No, I mean, you know what? They're just like such fucking douchebags. What do they even... Like, what is it to... What do they fucking care? What is wrong with them? Why are they so obsessed with everybody else's fucking business? Because they're such fucking losers. You guys, I'm sorry I'm swearing so much. I'm sorry if your child is now swearing because I'm swearing so much. But, like, I legitimately can't deal with it anymore. I can't deal with these guys. Because I don't know what to do. Some people feel like they just enjoy grievances. They just make up grievances to have. I have a grievance. Yeah, Obviously, but I didn't make it up. You're not going to to the Proud Boy Jamboree to ruin it or whatever. Who even knows where that is? Probably somewhere not great. And we've heard like, you know, well, the fucking insurrection and Trump being like, there are beautiful people and the love was so apparent and like, you know, very good people on both sides. Those Those aren't good people. Those aren't good people. And so... Then I think who we need to, who we do need to have a conversation with is who has let it slide. You know what I mean? Like, I don't think, obviously, I don't think I'm ever getting through to a proud boy, but I think I can have a conversation with someone who has been like, no, I think it's just there's differences of opinions and a little, I think we need to have a deeper conversation about like, well, let's talk about this quote unquote difference of opinion that you're talking about that you're making allowances for and does that difference of opinion make any allowances for other people's right to exist no then 
You have to stop excusing it. You have to stop. And I think those are conversations we can have, but they're going to be fucking hard because you know who they're going to be with? Who? Our relatives, our husbands in some cases, um, old friends from school whose lives are different than our lives, but we've still stayed in touch. Um, You know, older guy friends, I think, uh, are a lot of people that I see... (sighs) I have, like, guy friends that were, like, very, you know, that were, like, liberal like me, and that's why we were friends, and then they seem to get ultra-liberal, um, which I can understand and I can respect, but then, like, it happens all the time. Then, all of a sudden, they'll start to say things that are, like, a little fascisty, and I'm like, what? what's happening, sir? And so, usually, I just... um Pretend like I didn't see that uh, if it happens on, like, social media. But I think I'm going to have to, like, you know, fuck, I got to start getting into it and be like, what are you saying? What are you saying and why are you saying this? Because they feel aggrieved as well. It's very weird. And then people will say, like, there is no connection there. But I'm like, but sometimes there is a little connection between someone that, like used to be like me and over time has like been like, yeah, but think of the guys like they never a lot of guys are never going to own a house or have as much sex as they want. And that's why they're doing this. And I'm like, wait, weren't you? Wait a minute. Right. I mean, all of it is like as if because they they think they've been they're owed these yes. things. Yes. Which, by the way, I guess. I mean, if I'm being generous, I guess I could see how this country has told every single person you can be whatever you want and have whatever you want, um, whatever you dream of, it's yours. It's just that, like, the rest of us had the sense to recognize pretty early on that that was just marketing and it wasn't necessarily true. The claims weren't necessarily true. But there's apparently, like a lot of people that really believed it and they're like, you know, the things that I want are modest. I want a house, a house. (laughs) I want, you know, a job, a job. And I want to be able to have sex with and degrade any woman that I want to. And like, and if we're not having sex, I want to harass her and dux her or, you know, I want to yeah, show and up. and I need at, her to be submissive to me. Yeah. And I hate women. Mm-hmm. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Yeah. And that's just my opinion, man. And that's what's great about America is I'm allowed to have that opinion. And then we have to be like, I guess you're allowed. I guess. I mean... My hope is that always that things like this will be unifying. But again, I just feel like we're all at like this real. I don't even know what to call it. Like, I just feel very I feel very frayed. Like there's so much to pay attention to and so much to manage. And like, you know, (laughs) you're talking about your terrible experience with your air conditioner and your your maggot air fryer, your air fryer maggots. And um, I just feel like everybody, you know, maybe not necessarily maggots, but I just feel like it's so hard right now just to just to succeed at like the smallest thing. Making a fucking frittata and remembering it. It's so hard to succeed at making and eating a frittata and then the fallout from when you don't, you don't finish. You don't, you don't complete that task is sometimes it's bad. Sometimes well, clearly it's fucking maggots. <laughs> I'm so sorry to laugh, but I have had a couple surprise maggot situations. And so, you know, you don't grow up on a farm without having some surprise maggots. But when we moved into this house, they uh, left 
a um like one of those garden storage like chests where they were like they just told us oh that's like potting supplies and um and soil and stuff like that and so we never looked in it because we were like that can wait and we had like a lot more pressing concerns and then one of my sons opened it and he was like it was potting supplies and soil but also like some cans of open cat food that they must have been feeding stray cats with and so there was a surprise maggot situation, which my kids were like, it's not just that it was maggots. It's just that when um, open cat food has been stored inside a plastic chest in the hot California sun, it's not really like the maggots were just, you know, the visual manifestation. But the smell was also really bad. Uh, Guys, how you have maybe heard the housing market kind of a mess. A mess. It's like just impossible to get a house. There's bidding wars, rising mortgage rates. I was talking to my friend who said that um, she put in an offer on a house and then it went for literally $1 million more. Ouch. Than, yeah. I mean, what? What? Yeah. And first time home buyers really, it's it was daunting before. Now, kind of don't stand a chance unless you have help. Yeah. And here's the thing. Not all of us are as lucky as me, Busy Phillips, to have a realtor as your mother, Barbara Phillips. (laughs) And But here's the good news for you. There's a podcast that cares about people helping them navigate the home buying process. And host David Sedoni is an industry expert. He's got years of experience. And the podcast is called How to Buy a Home. How to Buy a Home, the podcast. You can't forget it. And uh, David Sedoni, the host, I love this guy. He's he's amazing. He's also made buying a home for so many people a reality, like their first home. Um, Episode 82, just going to highlight a few. Kenneth and Danielle, (laughs) they reached out to David. They got connected with a great unicorn realtor in their area used a VA loan to get their first home for no money down. What? Episode 85 with a listener who had a job for five months before he bought a house at the age of what? 19. What? Excuse me? Who? (laughs) How? David Sedoni will tell you how. (laughs) Uh, Guys, he can even connect you to a great realtor in your area. It's also just kind of fun to listen to. I mean, I'm just kind of a real estate buff. I'm really my mother's daughter. (laughs) <laughs> so I personally just love, even though I'm, I own a home currently, I like really love listening to this podcast. Well, I was going to say, yeah, he kind of just makes my heart feel good. Mm-hmm. So even if like owning a home is a long-term goal of yours and mm-hmm. it's down the road, you might just enjoy the podcast for funsies. Yeah. And also it's like nice to have like information always that you can yeah. share with others too. Yeah. So start your path today with the How to Buy a Home podcast and make this the last year you rent. Listen to the How to Buy a Home podcast today. You can find How to Buy a Home on YouTube, which is amazing. And also just wherever you listen to podcasts, where are you listening to this right now? Guess what? You'll be able to find How to Buy a Home. Take our word for it. Trust. Higher Dose. I had the joy of a lifetime. I got to go into Higher Dose recently and experience it. And, you know, I'm lucky because I live uh, not far from one. However, there's lots of people that don't have a Higher Dose within walking distance. And uh, we have great news. That's why we have the best news for you ever of all time. They have made a -a one-of-a-kind at-home spa experience for you. For you. You can now buy higher dose devices to use in the privacy of your own home, which for me is great because I love a home spa experience like you would not believe. So you can get the benefits of infrared's healing heat, PEMF's grounding technology, and my favorite red lights rejuvenating rays on your face. So they have the, which is, this is their bestseller, the portable infrared sauna blanket. It makes it easy to get your hot and high, sweat it out anywhere you are. You lay down inside the blanket, you turn up that heat, you sweat it out. 
You can burn like 600 calories in just one sweat session, but it's really good for your body and your bones and your joints and all of the bits and pieces of you. Ugh, feels so good. Yeah. Infrared therapy supports glowing skin, deeper sleep, balanced mood. And as your core temp heats up, your brain releases a dose of happy chemicals. And who doesn't need that these I need days? That. Everyone needs it. <laughs> Guys, you will love it. Trust me. And for those of you who want to experience the benefits of infrared without like the major sweating, some people don't love to sweat right. a lot. They also have the infrared PEMF mat that recharges your cells and helps you feel relaxed, grounded, and rejuvenated. It's a game-changing mat combining the powerful technology of the heated infrared with PEMF. And plus, there's like 20 pounds of healing crystals like amethyst and tourmaline. Just very relaxing, restorative. You're going to love Kinda it. It cool. makes you feel super grounded. Yeah. I mean, I yeah. love it. Also, I know you want to look beautiful. Get that red light face mask stimulating collagen, activating glowing skin, reducing fine lines, regenerating your cells. Use it while you're doing your sauna blanket. Get your whole infrared beauty routine on. I love all the products. I use all the products. I want you to use them all yeah, too. Yeah, same, Truly. same. I use them all as well. So get your own sauna blanket or mat or both and red light mask. Yes, today at higherdose.com. You can use promo code BEST at the checkout and you'll save 15%. That's higherdose.com, promo code BEST. Or just go to higherdose.com slash busy to save 15% off. Amazing. I told you about the peanut shells in that house, my fir the first house that I had in Los Angeles. I think you did. Yeah, that there were peanut just that, shells. Like, no, like, just like I would be outside and like peanut shells would just like fall from the sky. Yes, and, like, yeah. I didn't understand what was happening. And then the house next door sold. And did I ever tell you this fucking weird thing? I don't know. Tell me. The house next door. I had this house in LA. This is before Mark and I were married and like got the house that we had together. Right. Yeah. So I had this house in LA, but Mark and I were dating. And he had a house that he had, like, bought, whatever, uh, long before me. Because, you know, he's significantly older. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm teasing Mark. Mark. I'm teasing. He doesn't need... I, he's probably not even listening to the podcast. I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> uh, he's not... I mean, he's he is. But it, well, anyway, the point being, he <laughs> he's had a house... A, he's a normal amount older. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> anyway, he had a house... So peanut shells would like fall from the sky, but not a ton, but like enough for it to have happened a few times and for me to be like, the fuck is this? What's going yeah. on? And then the house next door to my house sold. And this is the part that's fucking weird. The person that bought it was Mark's next door neighbor at his house. Oh, weird. Isn't that fucking weird? So Not weird. No, we didn't really know him. Yeah. But just like one day Mark was coming over, like they moved in or they were moving in and Mark was coming over to see me and he was like, why is my neighbor next door to you? He's like, hey, man. And he's like, what are you doing here? <laughs> and like I, he thought that Mark was like coming to see him or something. He's like, <laughs> my girlfriend lives here. And he's like, what? How fucking weird is that? Anyway, so they were moving, they moved into the house. And then like a couple weeks later, I saw that guy outside and he was like, oh, you're never going to believe what happened. And I was like, what? And he's like, I was just like doing some work in the basement, like cleaning things out because they like left some weird stuff. And I found this like open bag of peanuts <laughs> and there was this like... And then I turned around and there was just a squirrel sitting there looking at me. <gasps> and like, I think that the people who owned the house before had some sort of arrangement with the neighborhood squirrels. Yeah. And they were, and they would come and get peanuts and then they would drop them on my head. Well, the shells. 
This makes so much sense. It makes so much sense. You know the fun house that on my <laughs> cul-de-sac that has yeah. like the little fake river that I threw mosquito uh mosquito killers in. I need um, to get those mosquito killers. Yeah, they're all natural. They're just called mosquito dunks. They're like they look like little sawdust donuts and you just throw them in in the water and they uh they do a great job and they did a great job at the fun house but the fun house has a bunch of really big bird feeders hanging from the tree in their front yard and they're all full of peanuts because we were finding peanut shells in our little Wait, square that's so of weird. yard and it's because squirrels get peanuts from down the street and then they bring them and hide them in our yard and squirrels are really smart they have like crazy photographic memories so they remember where they buried a stupid fucking peanut to come back and get it. Like, I don't, I'm just like, just eat the peanut now. Well, I don't get why they're hiding and hoarding, but I suppose For they know. winter, man. <laughs> Squirrels, I'm not trying to tell you how to do your job, but just eat the peanut when you get it. Those people well, are always going to put the peanuts out for you. This is my argument with Gina every day. <laughs> is that she finishes her dinner. Yeah. And then she looks at me expectantly because <laughs> she wants one of her little like bone treats and I'm like okay I'm gonna give it to you but are you gonna eat it and she just like wags and sits and wags and looks at me yeah and then I give her the fucking thing and she disappears and comes back two seconds later I'm like you hit it you hit it I know you hit it you didn't eat it I gave one to you go eat the one I just gave it she wants another one she wants another one to hide she wow. would hide them all day long. Last night, Cricket got into bed with me to like cuddle. And Cricket was like, ah! And it was one of Gina's bones. Just a chewed bone. Just in, it wasn't chewed. She doesn't she chew them. That's what I'm new? saying. It was a brand new bone that she just dug into the covers, into the comforter. Oh, interesting. And she just likes to hide them. I gave her one when we got to Casa Kismet this morning. I don't know where she put it, but I'll find it someday. I, uh, hopefully it won't have maggots on it. But I hope not. Hope, if it hopefully does, it's, it's dry enough not to support it's dry. It's dry. maggot life. Ew, um, you guys, why? You're going to need some type of brain wipe for that. You're going to need a, a men in black pen to, to wipe that from your mind. It was really disgusting. Yeah, of course it was. Of course it was. Why can't maggots be cute? Why can't they just have like little... Little eyes. I mean, they're babies. Like big eyes. Yeah, they need like googly eyes on them. And, and then like you'd be little... like, oh my God, so cute. I know, but they it I? really, I if you've never down. seen maggots, it looks like if rice came to life. Ew! Ew! <laughs> <laughs> so gross. Okay, so here's the other things on my agenda. All right, so okay. we got What's through, on your oh, agenda? Okay, it goes... It goes, OMG maggots, dumb, <laughs> crossed off, crossed off, wrong at wrong address, 50 minutes, crossed off, crossed, crossed off. off, proud boys, crossed off. <laughs> <laughs> Is that your whole agenda? No, I've got, I've got two, three more things. All right. Okay. Well, I have a story for you that involves the thing you hate most in the world, but I think it's okay. Okay. I'll be all right. Okay. I saw on Instagram, like it like popped up in my thing, this place in New York. I'm not getting paid by these people. I paid them. Okay. But I just want to talk about it. Yeah. Called Medi Pedi, M E D I P E D I. Medi Oh, I remember you posting about that. Yeah, I did. Um, you were just like at one point you were like, should I try this or something? Yeah, maybe I asked you. I don't think I ever oh, posted maybe. about maybe it. Maybe you showed. Maybe you just showed it to me. Yeah, maybe it popped up in your feed. Maybe who knows? Because it was. I don't know. You've heard of it, is what you're saying. Yes, Medi Petty, I've heard of it. I don't think we've talked about it on here yet. I don't think so, no. Okay, but anyway, I was just like, interesting. And so what it is, is like, it looks like a dentist's office. Did we talk about this? I don't think so, no. Okay, it looks like, kind of like a dentist's office. Like, it's like the same kind of chairs. You're in your own little chair thing. You go in, all of the equipment is like, 
medically sterilized sure. that they use. And their whole thing is just like your feet should be like soft and pretty and natural and easy. Like you don't, it's not, there's no polish involved. Oh, okay. It's like tools and okay. their whole thing is like that they're going to like, they're going to make your feet just better. They're their best selves. They want your feet to live their best lives. <laughs> okay. Okay. So I tried to get in and they were like, oh, the first appointment, this was when I first saw it, like a couple months ago. The first appointment that they had was like four months later or something like that. I was like, oh geez gosh. Louise, like I can't, I don't know. And this was before I had Blake working for me who he could call and try to finagle me an appointment. Sure. So like a week and a half ago, I was like, Blake, will you call this place? I really want to try to get in and get one of these pedicures because I've just been feeling like my feet are doing okay, but I just feel like they could do better. (laughs) Okay. It's sandal season. Right. You know? Yeah. So make an appointment, go in. The ladies are so nice. Took me into my little room. I sat in the chair that was like a dentist chair, kind of. Yeah. And then this woman comes in who's like, she had like some sort of designation. Like I, I, she's not, I don't think she's necessarily, she's not like a podiatrist, but I actually do think she might be some sort of nurse practitioner type. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. She certainly had like diagnostic advice. Yeah. But the first thing that she said, and now listen, guys, I'm going to do, I have to like do how she said it. Okay. It's kind of an accent, but it's, I, it was, I don't know where she's, I didn't know where she was, but like, she just, as soon as she saw my feet, she goes, oh, I love fluffy feet. (laughs) (laughs) Fluffy feet. (laughs) She kept saying it, Casey, over and over again about my fluffy feet. And I was like, I mean, on one hand, like, I have talked about my fluffy feet forever. (laughs) Like, the fact that I have, do you remember me talking about my fat feet, like, back in Busy Tonight days? I don't remember. You don't? Oh, my no. God. Right. Probably because you were like, I hate feet. So I was like, I can never talk about my fat <laughs> feet to you. But I used to say that, like, like even when I was, like, you know, like, sort of, like, the fittest I've ever been and, like, maybe, like, weighed the least I've ever weighed as an adult, my feet and my hands are, like, chubby always. Like, the bottoms yeah. of my the bottoms of my feet and and my hands are, like... She's not wrong. They're fluffy. Yeah, they're yeah. fluffy. They're we fluffy. have this in common. When I did stand up comedy, I did a bit about how the tops of my feet were fat, no matter how much I, how much I worked out, and like, I don't even. <laughs> well, no, like, yes, it's like it. There's no, but it's not. I don't even know what it is. I just have fluffy feet. And she was like so excited because she's like, these are the best feet. The fluffy (laughs) feet are the ones that always just, they look the best when we're done. The fluffy, (laughs) I'm so glad you have fluffy feet. And I was just like, could not stop laughing. And it was one of those moments where I was just like, I wish someone else was here with me because (laughs) to like experience this lady talking about my beautiful fluffy feet. But then she was like talking about my toes. Like she's like, this guy is trying to move into this guy's territory. And so you need to use a foot, like a toe separator <laughs> because this guy just needs more room and see what's going to happen is like, you're good. This is why you're, you'll get a bunion as you get older. Like see how your toes are moving. You have to like, we have to correct it now. So like she gave me these like toe separator things that I'm like wearing around the house now. Wow. And, um, and then she was telling me that my arch support sucks, which I was like, yeah, I know. And that I have to wear like an arch support thing so that my toes relax so that my toes can be free. Sure. Wow. Fluffy feet. (laughs) Fluffy feet. I was like, as long as you just, Keep telling me how beautiful my fluffy feet are. Oh, my gosh. I love that. 
I love that. Wait, so then they do, so then like the tech comes in. It's like kind of like when you the, you see the dentist. It literally yeah. was like exactly like a dentist. Yeah, visit. like the doctor, then the hygienist. The dentist, yes. The dentist sees you and then the dental hygienist com- comes in. So then my foot hygienist c- came in and she like explained to her what like the prescription prescription was for me. And then I sat there and she was like a half an hour or something. And she like did all this stuff. And then... When I tell you that my fluffy feet have never been so soft ever (laughs) in my life, like they were like cricket baby feet. What did they do to you? They used these tools. Nothing hurt. Like literally nothing hurt. Good. It was, well, I know, but like you've, everybody's had a pedicure where you're like. Yeah, where they just like (laughs) use a jackhammer on you and you're like, um. Right. And then like it doesn't. But even in those pedicures that I've had like that, like yeah. never have ha- I had feet that have felt this delightful, wow. fluffy feet. Um, I felt like I just really had a new lease on my feet. That's and amazing. I know. And then she also gave me these like weird little silicone hats that I have to put on my toes when I shower so that... I don't get gross water in them because that's like how fungus grows. And okay. we don't want me to get another fungus toe like I had before and I lost that toenail. Right. Remember? Right. Yes. Um, and I have a special cream and then I have this like weird silicone type. I don't know if it's silicone, but like it's like a rubbery heel. I have like all kinds of accoutrement now. Yeah, you just basically have like little scuba suits for your feet. I have little scuba suits to keep that moisture locked in. But I am committed to heel and foot, (laughs) fluffy foot health. Well, here's what I'll say about that. I don't, I don't like feet in general, but it's really like gross, horrifying feet are the worst thing for me. Like a New York City flip flop dirty foot moment Gross. is people keep sending me this clip of this um, Peloton instructor uh, who just snaps and is like, don't wear flip flops in New York City. It's gross. And so people keep sending me a a clip of him saying, like, we thought you'd appreciate this. And I'm like, I do appreciate it. Um, I love that the focus of this was, like, seems like foot health and, like, Mm -hmm. aesthetics. But Um, also, like, she was just, like, corrective. Yeah. In terms of, like, giving me those little toe separator things that I have to wear. I wish... I need to get another pair for Casa Kismet, though, because I would, like, be wearing them right now. Right, if you had them with you. But I really do, like, I think we all sort of, like, treat our feet like shit. Yeah. I think well, that's was, the problem. Yes. Well, it's, like, not a thing that, you know, you just go to, like, your regular doctor, I guess. Or if you injure yourself, if you, like, flat out injure yourself, maybe you'd get some attention to it. But... I was going to also say I love somebody that, like, works with feet for their job and they're, like, super enthusiastic and great about it. Like, I could never. It could never be me. But but my husband has a great podiatrist recommended by someone in an L.A. moms group who's married to him. And he – that it's, like, one of my husband's top ten best friends in L.A., his podiatrist, because the guy, like, loves being a podiatrist. He's amazing. My husband drives really far for appointments with him because my husband works on his feet 10 hours a day on a concrete floor. And so that'll fuck up your feet, you know? Um, So this guy is great. But yeah, I have to hear about like, he has all kinds of foot accoutrements too. Maybe you guys can compare notes one time about your scuba suits and your special socks and... Well, and also... She rightfully was like, your calves are too tight. Like, that's mm. that's part of your issue. Mm. So she was like, I have a whole regimen. I'm really, I'm like stretching the calves out. <laughs> there you go. There's, I know there's a little exerciser for that. Because, well, you can have you ever had like a golf ball. Yes. Have you ever had plantar fasciitis? Yes. Which is, that's, that is part of the issue with my toes. Yeah. And she's just like, the way that people's 
like feet get sort of horrifying looking is because yeah they're like they're not taking care of like their foot's needs yeah your feet have needs guys yeah it's true my husband and I have also been talking a lot about he has this characteristic and also my older son who is like He's like a bird bones. You know, he's six foot two, but he's very, very, very thin. If you've ever met my son Eli in person. But my husband, who's also a small guy, he's, you know, he's not tall and he's also a slight person. They hit the ground so fucking hard when they walk that it like sounds like it sounds like thunder. Like if they're upstairs, not that we we live in a ranch now, but when we had an upstairs, you could just always hear them like pounding or whatever. So I was having a talk with my husband that I think like some of his issues and some of his body issues, um, discomfort from like working those long days are like a little bit of like body mechanics issues, like maybe the way you're using your body. And I was like, I just don't. Like, how do you, how do you critique and criticize a person's walk? But I was like, I just don't know that you need to strike the ground with that much force. Like he's like stomping like a, like a model, like a runway model. Well, so, isn't, didn't he always want to be a runway model? Eli did at one time. He was, he did aspire to be a runway model. But, um, so anyway, the upshot is that like my husband and I talked it over and, uh, devised like maybe some ways that he could be lighter on his feet and walk more lightly. And now it is very hilarious to watch him try to remember and put that in place because it just looks funny. Like just imagine (laughs) suddenly your husband just starts walking around like, you know, like he's going to do a tumbling pass in the Olympics or whatever. Like he's a, he's doing a floor exercise or whatever. (laughs) And he's, like, not sure if he's doing it right. And so it's wild. But anyway, people that work with feet, good for you. She really took care of you, it sounds like. Well, I'm in. I love this. I love this whole thing. Well, you you love to turn over a new leaf and, like, have a life-changing experience. Who doesn't? (laughs) Some people don't. Some people are like, ah, that's not for me. I would never try that. But you say yes to these things. I think it's good. I do say yes to these things. You know what I said no to over the weekend? What? Going to the premiere of this documentary at the Tribeca Film Festival that, like, was about abortion stuff. And I just was like, I can't do it. Yeah. Like, you know how you were, like, talking, was it last week, the week before, or whatever, about, like, what was it? Like, what, what was the like word not, you used? Like, d- not d- marinating? Something it into the ground? <laughs> oh, belaboring something. Yeah, belaboring, not belaboring a thing. It's like, yeah. I'm sure they wanted, you know, me there to, like, support, and I wanted to, and then I also was, like, and I did. I really wanted to be there yeah. to support. Yeah. But then the thought of having to sit through a two-hour movie about how fucked it is. Yeah. It's like, I can't, on a Sunday, when I was, like, I don't, I had a, we had, you know, I had a babysitter. I was, like, I don't get that many chances to just, like, go yeah. have brunch. Yeah. 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 So I just went and had brunch. It's just like, it's still, yeah, you were right to do that. And like, I'm sure the documentary is great and I'm sure you'll support it in other ways and probably maybe even watch it at some point, but it's preaching to the choir. Like you, you know, obviously you're fully on board. And so, you know, that's fine. But also, it's still COVID. You know, I, w- I wouldn't have been able to, I wouldn't have been able to go sit in a theater and watch a documentary, even if like it was a documentary about me. If I was the star, you would. I, would. I think you would if it was. <laughs> but I'd be. I do able- think it. I do think it. I do think you would be able to. I just feel like I don't know. I think you made the right call, and you just have to make the call in the moment how you're feeling. Like, I know, and I know. did feel bad because, like, it is one of those things, right? Like, people ask me to show up for these things, right? Because it's like, 
for whatever, a myriad of reasons. Like, yeah. they, like could, maybe the picture of me would make it into some thing supporting the film. I don't fucking know. Yeah. I'll talk about it here. Yeah. I mean, it sounds super interesting and also just sounded like I could not bring my fucking brain to do it. And it was like an act of self-care. Yeah. To, like, to just just bail and go have brunch with Simran instead. And <laughs> like, that was really nice. I mean, I do wish I would have found the maggots yesterday. Yeah, that would have been good. But, you know. One brunch was great. One brunch was full of maggots. Ugh. <laughs> it was so gross. It, that is so gross. But I think that's the right call. Like, so, you know, it's it's hard, right? Because, like, if it was... Well, <laughs> when Matt and I got married, there were people that were like, I just couldn't... I couldn't make it to your wedding. Like, I know I said I would go, and I just didn't. And, like, that, I felt kind of like, huh. Like, that's not great. Um, but... What does that mean? Like... There were people that were just kind of like I wasn't up to it. Oh, by the way, that happened at my wedding. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody tried to, like, text me that they weren't coming because they weren't feeling well. Oh, my God, well. you're right. That fully fucking happened. And I was like, <gasps> that person's dead to me. <laughs> I just was like, I don't want to spend any part of my wedding day listening to why you're not up to it. So, okay, fine. Um, I should have billed them for their dinners. And then I'd be writing and am I the asshole on Reddit uh, today asking if I was the asshole for billing people for their for their dinners that they weren't up to eating. Um, but it's not a wedding. It was like a premiere that a lot of people were going to. I think you did the right thing for yourself. And I think whoever made that movie... And must have done a great job of it, of it if it's in that festival. Oh my god, it looks amazing. I, the movie's I'm called sure Battleground. They, I, I'm sure they. But understand. like, even just like the name, of it, I was just yeah. like, "Can I do this today?" <laughs> you know, and yeah. like, I just feel like we fight. We're fighting so hard on so many fronts. All of us, many yeah. of us, most of us, some yeah. of us aren't. Some of us could be doing more. Yeah, some of us could be doing more. But yeah. I'm just saying, like personally, I felt like emotionally exhausted by my week, by other, like by personal things, by like all kinds of shit. Yeah. And I just a little bit was like, you know, I think, I think brunch with a frozen Paloma and some huevos <laughs> rancheros is going to be better for my soul in this moment. Yeah. Also, I'll fight for abortion tomorrow. Also, it's not going to change the fact that the Supreme Court is going to overturn Roe. Probably for my birthday. Oh my gosh. I was wondering it, when the, when that There was a rumor that it was going to be today. Is, yeah. I thought it was, I, I was up early checking to see what came out today. There was a rumor it was going to be today, but I think they're going to do it literally my birthday week. I think oh. that it's, I think that it's going to be a birthday present that I did not want. Right. That I would like to give back <laughs> to Amy Coney Barrett. Oh my gosh. Yeah, that's a rough. Have you been watching the um, hearings at all? Well, so I know because I was somewhere when they, oh, I was at oh, Sarah Beth's were, concert. You were at Sarah Beth's concert. Yeah, yeah her yeah. show, which was fucking amazing. Oh, good. And so I was so proud of her. I like Sarah Beth Tomberlin. For Tomberlin. The, if, if you want to Tomberlin, if you want to check out her new record album. Album. It's called I don't know who needs to hear this. And I like sobbed a little bit. It was like really. And I br and I brought Birdie. Ah, it was cute. And you know, Birdie's not great in a crowd, which is always yeah. like funny because. Well, whatever. Just does because Birdie loves going to Harry Styles. Well, concert, I was going to say they love a lot of things that happen in a crowd, but the crowd itself isn't the best. But I think Birdie is better in a crowd of a lot of peers as opposed to a crowd of like adults, adult hipsters. Yeah. yeah. You know what I yeah. mean? Like, yeah. it, it's not like the same. It's not like a, the same. Anyone crowd. would be. <laughs> yeah. 
I'm not I'm not great in a crowd of adult hipsters either. Yeah, who is? No, I'm okay. I feel fine. <laughs> but anyway, um because we had like you know, like passes or whatever, we got to go up into this little balcony and like oh, and so Bert and I were just like up there and watching the crowd and watching SB and it was so good and I was so proud of her. But because of that, I kind of missed the hearings Friday night. Yeah. I'm sure you got to catch up. I definitely saw some highlights, boy. Ooh. What the fuck? It's nuts. It's Did you guys watch it? Did you nuts. guys watch it? I mean, I think like 20 million people watched it, which that seems, you know, that's about the equivalent to Monday Night Football, I think, which is a big crowd, you know? And that's just on TV, not online. Right. That's what, I mean, like, right. Like, I didn't watch it, but definitely watched some things, some clips online. Yeah. Yeah. Read some... I was going to say reviews, but that's not well, what I meant. Well, uh, I think Deadline did review it. Like they oh gave God. it a, a tepid review. And I was like, like it's, what does that mean? It's not the fucking West Wing, you goobers. Why are people such idiots? I don't know. It's I just don't either. It's just that, I don't know. I guess when you make content, you think that everything is an opportunity for content and that it's your duty to somehow spin content mm. out of it. And I'm just like, no, sometimes you can just get a pint of ice cream and shut up. Like you can take the night off of critiquing things that are not critiquable entertainment. But, but mm. this is what I will say. Mm. Not to both sides the issue. <laughs> Yeah. But I'm sure, to be honest, it was written by some writer that needed the few hundred dollars to crank out some stupid reaction to the hearings as if it was an entertainment program. <laughs> right. I'm sure. And I'm sure they were just like, you know, I need this. I need to make rent. I feel like, I don't know. That's yeah, what most or, writers who write those things need that couple hundred bucks. Of course. Or, and also allow space for the fact that, like, so many people are kind of so used to living in this space that, like, it wouldn't have even occurred to the person to question critiquing it in that way. Right, right. Because that's just culturally, like, where we're at. Like, of course right. I'm going to critique this. Like, right. obviously I'm critiquing this. Right. Because it's that's my job. what, it's what do. I do. This is what we do. It's my this passion. Is what we do. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh -huh. One time when Lincoln was little, he was doing something that, like, little kids do that's annoying, that parents tell them to stop. I don't want to, it wasn't whining. I don't know what it exactly it was. I can't even remember what it was, but I just remember little Lincoln going, it's my passion. <laughs> Wait, that's kind of amazing. <laughs> so whenever I'm doing something where everyone's like, why the fuck are you doing that? That's the wrong thing to do. And I hate it. And then I'm like, but it's my passion. Oh, my God. It's my passion is really <laughs> fucking funny. Really funny. <laughs> it's my passion. <laughs> I think that's got to be on a fucking t-shirt. <laughs> it's my passion. <laughs> <laughs> Olive and June, Olive and June, Olive and June, Olive and June, Many System is everything you need for a beautiful salon, perfect nail, manicure at home. <laughs> <laughs> I really think that was great. Guys, you've heard us talk about it before, but it's summer season. It's time to get your nails and your little toenails out into the world looking good. And you don't need to spend that extra money uh, at the salon with a manicure, pedicure, because sometimes it costs so much money and it chips and 
you know. Well, for me, I just like to change it up, you know. And so I was doing gel nails for the longest time. And that I also did at home because I'm a big DIYer. But getting that gel nail off of my nails was so damaging. And so to have an Olive and June Manny system where it looks as good as gel nails and to be honest, lasts for so much longer than any other regular nail polish. And then I can just take it off easily after two weeks. And I mean, or you can take it off easily after favorite, a day. This is my favorite. This is my favorite color. I've been wearing it. Geometry. Oh, nice. This green. Yeah, I like that. Olive and June geometry. I've been wearing it nonstop. It's like my favorite green <laughs> color. I love it. I love it. Um, with their Manny system, the Olive and June Manny system, you can achieve beautiful salon perfect nails, guys, at an affordable price. It's the ultimate secret behind those salon perfect nails. We love it. We've, I mean, like I can't, I also, since now I'm doing this like foot thing where I'm just going to that place that's like a medical foot thing to make my feet soft. They don't do nail polish and stuff there. So you gotta do your own. So I'm just, no, yeah. So I'm like getting that whole thing done. And then I'm just using my Olive and June Manny system with the cute colors because Their polish is so great. It, like, goes on super evenly. It lasts, like you said, as long as gels, truly. Yeah, it's such Um, a great formula. And it's so... You guys know, we can't say enough about Olive and June. It's so thoughtfully designed. The silicone poppy that pops on the brush handle to give it some weight and to make it easy to hold really ensures that your manicure comes out very professional looking. It doesn't look like a little kid painted... your nails. And Olive and June offers like all kinds of education online for how to give yourself a manicure if you're intimidated. Totally. And I love the little brush because it just like makes it all like you can, that little brush that you can dip in the um, nail polish remover and then you can, you know, you kind of like wipe around on the cuticle part of your nail and you fix your mistakes. It's so genius. Anyway, guys, getting beautiful. Salon Perfect Nails at Home is now a dream come true with Olive and June. Your new nail life is here. Visit oliveandjune.com slash busy for 20% off your first Manny system. That's O-L-I-V-E-A-N-D-J-U-N-E dot com slash busy for 20% off your first Manny system. Go get your new nail life. Foria, 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 Foria. I do love Foria. You know we love Foria. Guys, we've talked about Foria. What is Foria? <laughs> We're going to tell you. <laughs> you must know by now, but we will retell if you, you. If you don't listen to our ads, what are you doing with your life? <laughs> we'll tell you because it bears repeating. <sighs> listen, for too long, men have controlled the narrative with people that have vulvas and labias and clitoris exactly. about how sex goes and what we use during sex and what the what the lubrication situation is. And guys, the spit just wasn't cutting it. <laughs> oh <my God>. <laughs> <laughs> That's disgusting. It is. Yeah, there's a better way. It's 2022. There's a better way. And that's where Foria comes in to play. No pun intended. <laughs> They have products like the Awaken Arousal Oil and their Sex Oil, and it will make you and your partner feel, I mean, way more intense. It's just way more. Yeah, it just better sex ranges for you. from come on from pleasant to like mind blowing. To be honest, and that's solo or with a partner because you don't even necessarily need a partner if you don't want one. So, well, a hundred percent. And like, <laughs> let's all just kind of move to that place too, you know, sometimes. (laughs) Anyway, it's all natural plant-based ingredients. They intensify your sexual pleasure, relieve discomfort. Some people have like, listen, as we age, things change. Maybe you're just like, why is it kind of dry down there? I don't know what's happening. I'm telling you, Foria products are made to help women and people with vulvas fully experience their sexual pleasure 
They use CBD, warming sensation, inducing organic botanicals that enhance arousal and sensitivity and pleasure and access to orgasm and will help you with any discomfort. And best of all, it just turns you on. You don't need to take our word for it. Euphoria has a serious cult following with tens of thousands of people. You can go online and look at the testimonials on their website because... They're very entertaining reading. You have our permission to try this. We fully endorse you to go ahead and treat yourself to more, deeper, fuller pleasure wherever and whenever you can find it and as often as possible. You can start with a bottle of Foria. Foria is offering a special deal for our listeners. Get 20% off your first order by visiting foriawellness.com slash best or use code best at your checkout. That's F O R I A wellness.com forward slash best for 20% off your first order. We recommend trying their awaken arousal oil and sex oil. You're going to thank us. Bye-bye. Wait, are we going to start this fucking Substack situation? <laughs> Should we talk about that? <laughs> yeah, let's talk about it. Guys, here's the deal. Case and I have been discussing like a substack vibe. Speaking of content and constant content. Speaking of constant content, <laughs> we want to give you more. Um, <laughs> what happened to me? Uh, <laughs> it's heat stroke. You know, it's not, not. <laughs> it's like very warm in here. Oh, God. New oh, York. my gosh. Um, so we've been discussing if we should do a sub stack, like a newsletter vibe. There are a couple other like models, places you can go, right? But like, yeah, there's other, yeah, there's other places you can do a newsletter or you could do a Patreon, which like, let's back up a little bit. This is something we've been talking about for a long time. Forever. And I think that, um, in the past, we've always felt kind of like, well, is this the right thing for us to do? And we're already doing the podcast. But it seems like a lot of you are asking for more content and that you'd like to support it directly instead of, you know, being indirectly supported by ads. So this would be like in addition to the podcast. Um, right, the podcast will remain in this model as, <laughs> as it exists currently. <laughs> But we were just thinking, yeah, it would be fun to sort of, especially I've been thinking about it a lot, to be honest, ever since we did that experimental episode where we aimed to talk for 10 minutes every day and then edit it all together into like one, one Mm -hmm. hour podcast. And we talked for a lot more than that every day. And it was a really long podcast, but it's also one of our, like, out of all the celebrities we've had on really important people that you wanted to hear from that experimental podcast was like really popular for some reason. And I think it's because it like kind of captures like that day to day that, you know, just like when you want to catch up with your friends on your group chat or whatever day to day. And so that for me, that's when I became like, oh, this is something that like, it would be nice to be able to talk to our friends another time during the week and not have to wait for a full week to elapse. Yeah. I mean, I've had like many times where I'm like, get onto the Zoom with you for this. And I'm just like, I don't even know what happened this week. And (laughs) we just have to talk about this other bullshit now. But like, literally, you know what I mean? Right. Which is great. The bullshit that we talk about is great. I just am saying... I think it would be fun. Also, I want to try to force myself to write more. Yes. You know, and like, I do think that would be. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I am also really excited about trying to figure out a way to not just use it like a newsletter, but to use it like a hub for other fun things. Well, that's what we've recently been really trying to figure out, right? Yes, yes. So it's not just going to be like an update on like how the Medi Petty is holding up. It also might be, who knows, like if you subscribe to it, maybe you'll be like invited to, you know, 
join us to talk for like a live event, like a virtual live event, or, you know, maybe that's where we can do our book clubs or things like that in the future. I'm just looking forward to like experimenting with that platform as like a medium because that's what I like to do. Well, that's what I like to do too, Casey. That's why we love each other. Ah, wait, I just found these really... Wait, I think that's good. Wait, listen, I just found these really ugly um, arch support sandals. I feel like I need to buy them. <laughs> Should I buy these? What? Oh, don't name the brand because listen. Some, it might be like someone's favorite brand or whatever. But yeah, buy them. Um, arch support has come a long way. It's really available in a way that it it once wasn't. So These, these, seem, these seem real. Yeah. Real. Now I just have to decide what color I want to get. <laughs> well, if you ever want to talk about like every type of, uh, I do so much deep dive research on shoes and their properties for myself and my husband. I really feel like it's something that I could, maybe it could go on the newsletter. This could be a newsletter item. <laughs> Back in the day, back in the day, day, back, back, back in the day when um, I was just an actress trying to make it in Hollywood. Uh, you know, my friend Abdi Nazemian. Yes. And, you know, I was like, so he went to boarding school with Lauren Ambrose. And that's how, like, I knew her. Well, that's how I knew Abdi was because Lauren and I did a pilot together that didn't get picked up. And then... That's how I met Sarah Shatter, like all those people, like that right, whole group right. of friends that I was friends with in my early 20s, mid 20s, late 20s, till present day. Till now. Till now. Still friends. Um, but there was a period of time when Lauren had gotten some weird, oh my God, oh my God, S- some podiatrist or like some, no, it was a chiropractor, had talked her into getting these shoes that were so ugly (laughs) they were so ugly and there was like only one place that you could buy them in Los Angeles and it was like at the time it I mean the area now is like kind of like cool it's Mar Vista oh okay yeah yeah Mar Vista yeah but this is like early 2000s okay yeah late 90s early 2000s and like Mar Vista was like there was nothing in Mar Vista. You know what I mean? It was not yeah. like there was no cute there was no cute cafe. No, it was I'm just saying. it was just an ugly shoe destination. It was just like the place where you went and there was like this weird ugly shoe store and they sold these weird ugly shoes. <laughs> and Lauren, I think was the first one that got them was obsessed with them. If I'm remembering correctly. And then we all had to get them because they like changed her life. <laughs> And so then we all had these shoes and I was, we we were wearing these like horrible, we were like 23 (laughs) years old wearing these like horrible, horrible looking orthopedic (laughs) shoes, like for like senior citizens and anytime, like, and they were not cheap. I remember that they were like, you know, I was, I was not, you know, the busy Phillips of today. Right, right. All yeah, I, you were a young person. Was, yeah. I was a young person. I did not have the expendable income. And I remember they were like close to $200. And it oh was like, God. this was a big deal. And Abdi and our other friend Jennifer Candy Pan and Lauren and me and I think Jennifer Carpenter. So I guess it has to be around 2003 because we. Yeah. that's when Jennifer Carpenter and I met. Um like we all had these ugly ass giant orthopedic shoes that we would wear everywhere. Oh my god. It was insane. It's just <laughs> funny like the things that you just, <laughs> just get talked into. Yes. Well, I feel like maybe I'm on that journey right now, guys, but <laughs> let's just let me be on the journey. You know what I mean? I you're not gonna mind if I wear ugly shoes again. Well, you're no. just, yeah, you're just trying things. You're trying things. Also, though, like, now I'm, like, the right age, you know? Yeah. If you had continued wearing those shoes, you might not have to wear all your little silicone hats on your toes. Wow, 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 wow. Now, who knows? 
Who knows? No, but yeah, I think no. Here's what I'm gonna say. I think that there this was an inevitable eventuality for me. Especially moving to New York City. Yeah, and also just that I have these fluffy feet. Yeah. Well, fluffy feet, yes, but like when I before when I was in college, I wore size eight shoes. And then after I moved to New York City, my feet grew to size nine. I know. We I we've talked about this. I don't like And that then story. I had to sell all of my cool Doc Martens and everything on eBay. Thank God eBay was invented. But then after I had kids, then my shoes went to size 10. Ooh, okay, wait. So now we've talked about, I, I'm still, I'm just- I'm, You're just going back to your agenda. No, I'm going past that conversation about your feet growing so much because it's like, <laughs> I just don't, I don't want to even think about my feet growing anymore because I just can't handle it. It just, <laughs> it's not going to work for me. So I'm so not- you're going to stick your it, head in the sand yeah, about uh-huh. it. I'm going to ostrich right now. Well, I but, think wait, let's get back to the Substack. Okay, but I do, I just want to give you one reassurance. You've already right. had children and yeah. you've been in New York City for quite some time now. I think your feet have stopped growing. So, don't worry about it. My feet are not your feet. No. And that's what true. happened to my feet isn't going to necessarily happen to your feet. So, don't be worried about it. But to my back beautiful to sub- fluffy feet. Your fluffy feet. Yes. So, anyway, guys, so we were thinking about doing this Substack thing. I guess we could just try it and see if if people sign up and if it feels like we'll do like I think we'll probably have a lot of just free content probably but I think the yeah. idea would be that we would also have subscriptions so that well <clears throat> so that if people want to support it they can support it like you know I'm not an actress on a sitcom and you know, this, I'm trying to make a living. So, you know. Well, I am an, I am an actress on a sitcom, but we only do eight episodes a year. <laughs> <laughs> Whereas just to give you some perspective, my first year of Cougar Town, I did 24 episodes. There you go. That's you're, how you make you're a part-time a sitcom living. actress. I literally am. I'm a fucking part-time sitcom actress and not and then, on a, a network like on a streaming it's different than it used to be oh it's, it's different it's different so sometimes i tell people how different it is and they can't even believe it <laughs> how it used to be in hollywood back when i started oh boy uh but uh, oh, boy. i mean just for me like real talk i think i you guys would understand if i'm honest about that that like I, it's good for me to get paid um, to write when I write, and that would be a way to do it. Um, yeah. And then I won't have to go get a job um, doing some wild talk show hosted by, you know, I don't even, I don't even want to tell you some of the messages I get on LinkedIn. Who wants to, who wants to, <laughs> host their own talk show. And I'm sure lots of people do. Yeah, yeah, but it's always like it's just the really wild ones that are reaching out to me like, you know. I don't even want I don't want to subtweet anyone here cuz if they reach out to me on LinkedIn, they'll know that I'm blowing up their spot and their w- weird idea for a talk show. So, anyway, this would prevent me from having to, you know, necessarily do that. Maybe. Sure. <laughs> and Maybe. I mean, well, and also on another similar note, i.e. money's tough, a.k.a. being a freelance creative human is always difficult. Um, I like told you, I think that we, you know, Mark and I are like trying to downsize things because we have just too much shit you know yeah we always have had too much shit yeah how do how do I do that how do you do that yeah what do you think like it seems really weird it's like feels like it should be easier to sell your shit than it is do you know what I mean yeah yeah it's well you know who's a genius at it my son Eli is he can fucking sell anything that kid and where Where's he selling it? He does it uh, across like a million platforms, like Facebook Marketplace. What percentage does he take? Are we making a deal? What's happening? (laughs) 
<laughs> let it go. He, yeah, he hits up all of them because he's like, he just like does a campaign across all. Well, yeah, I, know, I do know because I've, because remember when we were back in the like no new things of yes. it all? Yeah. That, um, like I would, you pointed out and then it became a thing that I was very well aware of that like the same items would be listed on like first dibs, cherish, Etsy Etsy and eBay. Yes. And like they would be priced differently on all four of those things. Yes. You know? Yeah. But I guess like for me... Yeah, it's it's tricky. You know, like what kind I just of things don't... do you want to let go of? Are they like current things or antiques or like clothing, a mix? What kind of sure. things? Sure. All, all of those it. things, all the things. So, okay, here, I'll give you like some ideas. So, I de- we definitely have like furniture items. Uh-huh. And then some of the stuff I'm like, do I hold on to it? I I just can't. You know I'm a hoarder. Yeah. And it doesn't help that like Mark is also a hoarder because we're both cancers, you know? Yeah. So like we just like put things in our shells and then just like hold on to them forever. But well, also like I just want to point out so that you can be a little gentle on yourself is mm-hmm. that you're letting go of some things already that are like some pretty big things. And so when it comes to like letting go of maybe some other things, it's not so easy because like you're letting go reserves are used up for a little bit, you know? Sometimes you have to keep something until you just fucking know that it's not yours anymore, you know? Yes, I think that I know that. But then it's in the middle of your fucking living room and it's annoying. But sometimes that's part of the process for me. It's more that it's like I have too many sofas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those you should be able to sell on, like, if it's valuable and vintage, you know, then you should look into. And Eli for Real can help you figure out how much it's worth. And you should be able to get close to what it's worth in New York City. But if it's just like, you know, from a chain store and but it's in good condition, whatever, you should be able to sell it on Craigslist or Facebook Marketplace in, L- um, in LA, in New York, they have this thing called Apartment Deco, APT Deco. Oh, yeah, D-E-C-O. yeah. Yeah. And I guess I could list things there. I don't know. It just feels like, honestly, it feels like what I could do is like literally have an estate sale. Yeah, you could do that too. You could hire uh, because that's like people, you know, I told you my son went to Alex Trebek's estate sale like every day of it because he loves Alex Trebek so much. And he bought like his tools because he was an avid woodworker. Um, But (laughs) but like I don't I don't even need it to be like my shit. Like who cares if it's, you know, my shit. Right, right. Would yeah, no, care? no. Maybe. People do estate sales all the time just yeah. for stuff that people want. It doesn't but have also, to be like, like... can you just put... Can you put, like, glassware and shit on, like, Poshmark? Yes. You or, can? Um, yeah, what's the other one? Because Merc- I already have Mercari. a Posh- Oh, yeah. Merc- I, Mercari confuses me. Mercari I like because I think it confuses a lot of people, and so you can get good shit on there that no one's paying attention to. But I have a Poshmark account already. Yeah. And I, I have, think- like, a huge Poshmark... I have a bunch of stuff that can go to Poshmark, like clothing and stuff. Yeah. For like I was going to do like charity stuff, like part of it to charity too. Yeah. Yeah. As, as I do. Yeah. Yeah. You could do that. It's just, it's a lot, you know, like you bring these things into your life gradually. It's a lot of work to sort of get them back out of your life gradually. Because they're, you know, you've said this a lot of times, like you've actually had regrets about things that you've given up and felt sad about. And so like, I get it. Like, I'm going through the same thing right now, too busy because like my house is small. You know, you've been to my house. It's not a big house and four adults are living in it right now. And um, and my husband so nicely uh, bought me a refrigerator to keep Um, my drinks in, in my office and the chaos that has thrown my life into like where this refrigerator can go. Wait, I just saw the best thing. What? Well, it wouldn't, 
I don't know. If, it might come with a refrigerator. <laughs> so wait, so maybe that doesn't work. It's like, it literally was just advertised to me. Maybe at least I'll find the link. I can send it to you. But like room and board has okay. this like sideboard or yeah, it's like a sideboard with a drink fridge. Oh my God. Well, I have the drink fridge. But also maybe we should like just copy that. You yeah, know what I mean? Maybe Eli yeah. can just like um bang something together. This is what I'm saying. But it's if. like chaos. I'm redoing my closets. I'm redoing my whole because my office is like a podcast studio. Mm -hmm. An office, but mm -hmm. it's also where I keep all my clothes mm -hmm. because we have very little closets in the house. And so I would like like a vanity area, but it's fucking chaos because of this refrigerator. This refrigerator, which was so generous and which I love so much. I said refrigerator. That's such a Massachusetts thing. <laughs> Um, <laughs> it this <was> so fridge, <laughs> this fridge, which I love and it's so beautiful. And he stocked it with like 200, um, seltzers, which is so nice, um, is causing, it's going to cost me. Jesus. How big is it? It's, it's pretty big. It's like three feet tall and two feet wide. And now I have to redo all my closets and rearrange all my furniture. And then I'm like, well, let me just take this opportunity to make this like my dream room. Like it's so utilitarian, but I don't know. I don't know. Usually I'm pretty good at figuring this stuff out. And this one has got me stumped, but needless to say, I'm going to be putting some of my shit on Poshmark too, because there's no room for it. And so I gotta, I gotta sell some universal standard t-shirts <laughs> so I can, <laughs> so I can keep my refrigerator. I just wish it's also like, insane to me like that I can't just have like a fucking garage sale oh my god this room and board storage cabinet with refrigerator is fucking seven thousand dollars well I was gonna say I was Jesus gonna Christ. I didn't wanna I was like I looked at a room and board thing the other day and it almost made me cry like a desk and then so I was like I don't know if I'm gonna be able to afford this sideboard holy shit Room and board, get your shit together. In why this are you economy, so literally? Why are what, you so expensive? What are what you? Are, what gasoline? are you doing? <laughs> By the way, this isn't even. It's not even like fucking custom made. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, it's just a thing. If you're, it's just a thing. You're gonna, if you're gonna custom make me something, I'm not even paying seventy three hundred dollars for that shit. No fucking way. <laughs> I could get some guy to make me this thing for way less than seven thousand dollars on Etsy right now <laughs> well that's what's so good about like you know we have all these things at our disposal now but yeah room and board did hurt my eyeballs the other day but you know what I noticed now on the other end of the spectrum I'm looking for like a new desk solution for this podcast sure, studio sure. office closet mm -hmm. vanity situation mm -hmm. and I was like Ikea like, I'm going to redo my the inside of my closets with Ikea so that they're more efficient and possibly do my desk situation. The Ikea website. Oh, they're like on back order. Every, literally, yeah, I would say like 50% of everything is not available to yeah. be purchased or delivered so, at this so time. So listen, so I know this because when we were redoing the house, uh, part of how I got into the credit card situation. <laughs> Stop, you guys. I'm sorry. I'm just trying to make my kids' life nice, and maybe it's going to make me whatever. I'm just trying. <laughs> trying hard. I'm trying my best. <gasps> Gina. Uh oh, Gina did not like that. She just came and scratched me. <laughs> she did not like what my noise that I was making. <laughs> okay, I hear you, Gina. Um, so, I Ikea, saying? oh, you found out. There's, yeah, because there are like, these things like you can like get the they're like Ikea hacks and you can like make the cabinets cute yes. and blah, 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 blah. but you can't because you can't get them right right so um because of the shipping container this oh is God. supply chain issues Ikea is like the number one like supply chain issue uh like victim victim, victim? yeah sure. well well, um, did I ever tell you about the most famous I've ever felt? What? Do you know about the IKEA hackers website? No. 
There's a website where they will feature like particularly cool IKEA hacks. Mm -hmm. And one time, one of my IKEA hacks got Mm -hmm. on IKEA hackers and went kind of viral. And I felt very fancy. And it was the world's stupidest hack, but it was also fucking great. And I was so happy. What was it? I think there's a chandelier. It Uh has these like acrylic spokes um, Uh that you poke in and... um, and it makes like this diamond shape. They might not sell it anymore, but anyway, it was this um, acrylic chandelier where you poked in these little spokes that had like little balls on the end, and it made like a very orderly diamond shape. But my hack was that I put the spokes in randomly, and it looked like a mid-century modern Sputnik mm. chandelier for like eighty dollars or whatever, and Love it went that. super viral. I'm gonna try to find it and send it to you because that was I felt very famous that day. Being like an official IKEA hacker. It was the Stockholm chandelier. The Stockholm chandelier. I found a person on a. Oh, now they won't ship to California. <laughs> <laughs> they can't ship to California anymore. Oh, no. What are you Listen, trying to find? A desk with a drink fridge. A desk oh with God. space for a drink fridge. I think that's what we got to do. I think we got to do like, I think you got to get like a, like a desk with room to put the drink fridge, just slide I mean, it in there. I'm going to figure it out. But the problem is, is that like so much of this um, room is, well, it's like broken up because there are like closets in here and then there's like windows and I don't want to cover the windows. I think I have to get rid of some stuff. One thing I'm getting rid of is like I have kind of a futon in here because we also envisioned using it as like a guest dish room, but no one's ever slept over in this room. So I have to get rid of it and I have to get rid of what's hidden inside it because we have secret stuff like zipped into the compartments of the futon. (laughs) What the fuck are you talking about? It's like a whole other thing. I'll I'll tell you about it. I'll tell you all about it on Substack. <laughs> okay. Because I don't want my kids to hear. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, but anyway, I just sent Busy a thing about my little IKEA hack that went viral for the IKEA Stockholm chandelier that I turned into a Sputnik chandelier, but it was on Ikea hackers, but I sent busy. It was on one of my favorite websites, apartment therapy. And I felt very famous. That, <gasps> day. that is very famous. <laughs> <laughs> and then you can see a picture of my old chandelier in my apartment. I mean, in my house in Connecticut. Oh my gosh. <laughs> That's very exciting. It was a big deal. It was a big day. I that really didn't focus deal. on my on my work or my job that day because oh, I was wow. I was busy handling the Look fame. at you in apartment therapy. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. <gasps> wow. Wow, wow, wow. It was it, it, you know, I felt proud of myself. Sorry, now I'm just reading this article. <laughs> Over at Ikea Hackers, Casey St. Ange gave the new Ikea Stockholm chandelier a makeover just by sticking the spokes in randomly. Oh, my God. That's amazing. You really did it. You really, I really did it. Did it. Highlight highlight of my career, my online wow. career. Wow, wow, wow. <laughs> But so anyway, yes, I'm with you on downsizing. I have to downsize some things myself. Um, maybe maybe listeners will have some ideas about good ways to, you know, yeah, to offload I mean, some stuff. I think, look, I'm like definitely the Poshmark thing. I'm going to do a lot of clothes. Yeah, me too. Same at here. some point. But <sighs> I just don't fucking know, dude. 
The thing is, is like, here's what's hard about it is that, and here's why Eli's good at it is because he's really good at the follow up of either like sending it out to the person I'll that bought it. I'll hire your son, Casey. <laughs> Jesus. No, I'm just saying he, it, it's why I'm not so great <laughs> about it. He will meet a person, sell I them know. a sofa. Like, I think that's the thing. It's like, right? Like, we all. Like the 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 part that's hard is the follow through. Yes, it, that's the hardest part for me as well. Same, and so that's why he's. We had like a bunch of flower pots in like our alleyway that we just the people that lived here before left hundreds of flower pots that I was just like these like who cares about these. They're all pretty old, whatever. They don't have anything in them. They're all just stacked inside each other. And so Eli was like, oh, I'll take care of those. I'll get rid of those. And he like sold them all. And I was like, what? I thought you were just going to throw them all away. And he was like, no, I sold them. People want them. Did people, did, 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 it, but like, was it worth it? Yeah. He got like hundreds of dollars. Shit. And then I kind of had to just let him keep the money because I just, I wasn't, you know. I don't know. Free, free room and board. <laughs> Hardly I think you, free. I think, you, I think you could take a cut. <laughs> I just was like, oh, man, I guess I never really thought about selling those. But, yeah, you did it. You sold them. Um, he really does a ton around the house, so I can't really. I can't really. You're so nice. You're so nice to your the humans that you live with. <laughs> well, not always. I mean, I was telling you that I was like a couple minutes late. For the podcast, because I was having like a fucking meltdown with Matt over a fork. What happened to the fork? It just was like, it was, you know how when you're in the middle of having like a little bit of a fight and you know, you know, it's the stupidest fight in the world, but you Mm -hmm. can't stop. Yeah. It was just like, I was, (laughs) I was trying to clean my ring because it got like tarnished because I like used some chemical and it made my ring get tarnished. So I was trying to clean it and I put it in a bowl with hot water and there was a fork on the counter that had been on the counter. Well, it was there all day yesterday and I, it could have been prior to that. I don't know. But so I just took that fork to like fish my ring out to see how it was doing. And then Matt was like, Oh, I was going to pack that fork for my, to use with my lunch. And I was like, were you? Because it was here all day yesterday. And then he was like, well, because I got it out yesterday to pack with my lunch and then I forgot it, but I was going to take it today. And I was like, how was I supposed to know that? <laughs> and then we just got into it about a fucking fork and it was like, do you guys stupidest... only have one fork in your house? No, but well, I mean, I'm just like, in fairness to him, it was like an Ikea fork and he wasn't trying to take a nice fork. That oh. if he lost it or whatever. Oh, sure, sure. So, but it was like the stupidest argument, but neither of I us. I have those. I have travel forks. <laughs> See? I, from Target, yeah. Yeah, I there have you like, go. I have like, you know, they're not like, they're not plastic. It's like yeah. they're they're metal or whatever. I don't know what they're made of. Metal, yeah. I guess. Yeah. Kind of <laughs> so it was like the travel fork or like the the ring fishing fork. You know, you'd also want to use that that type of fork for that. Sure. And uh, yeah, we just got into it and had like, it was the, I knew like two seconds in, it was the stupidest argument, but yet it continued. Wait, Gina just came from outside on the balcony yeah. and she has the bone. Of course. She was, but she where left was it. it. She hid it out on the balcony. Somewhere, but like, I don't even, I was out on the balcony earlier just putting the, toaster oven out there the maggoty toaster oven hi sweetheart <laughs> gina got her summer haircut it looks so and cute like, i know she was just definitely they're like it's so fun dogs are so fucking funny like she was definitely insecure when she came back like Aww. she felt like yeah. nervous about yeah. her appearance yeah her well do you think it's that? Because I always think that too, but do we think it's that or do we think it's fucking weird when you're a dog and someone just drops you off somewhere and you don't know if they're <laughs> ever coming back? Oh my God. Wait, hold on. Gina's tangled in my cords. Sorry. <laughs> my cord was like on the ground and she just was like lo- looped her body through it so quickly that it was yeah. almost defied 
logic, really, jeans. <laughs> but well, she's Aww. just a cute little baby with a little short haircut. She looks um, good. She does look good. Well, yeah, I think that's true. Maybe about the dogs. Maybe they're just like, where the fuck did my person go? You know? Yeah. I mean, it's weird. Like, who who knows? 444. That's what time it is now. Oh, that's lucky. Make a wish. Okay. <laughs> she did it. She made a wish. I'm I really sure I thought could. about it. Yeah, that's a good one. When um, Eli was little, whenever we would give him a coin to like make a wish in a fountain, he was so cute because he would like stand at the fountain for so long and he would like his lips would be moving and he'd be like have his eyes closed and be like silently mouthing a wish for like 10 minutes. And I was like, what the fuck is this kid wishing for? I'm kind of like that, though. <laughs> I'm a little bit like that. I, like, want to make sure that it, like, counts and that it's Vi- real. Make it very specific. If you've ever read The Monkey's Paw, you know how bad an, a nonspecific wish is. I mean, I don't need to read The Monkey's Paw to know how bad a nonspecific <laughs> wish is. <laughs> well, that's where I learned about nonspecific wishes and how dangerous they can be. And also maybe gremlins, I feel like. I feel like gremlins has to do with like wanting, wanting excitement and then it goes awry. Is that what that's about? I mean, it's about gremlins, but you know. What are gremlins? (laughs) Mogwais. You probably know the, isn't there a band called Mogwai? Oh yeah, there is. But I know, I know. I saw gremlins. I'm, I'm old enough. (laughs) <laughs> I remember gre- gremlins scare the shit out of me when I was little. Yeah, it's scary. Um, I mean, doesn't like a girl's dad die being Santa Claus? In the- yeah, it's fucked up. Yeah, it's like there's nothing, there's nothing appropriate for children in gremlins. No. And yet. And yet. Loved it. But you were scared by it. Oh, my God. What about James Patterson lamenting white men struggling to find writing jobs in film, theater, TV, and... Just uh, just sit there and publishing eat your industry. very expensive food, James Patterson. James, hey, James, hey, James Patterson, I'm going to need you to <laughs> walk over into that room, <laughs> into the corner. Do you see? No, way over, right, way <laughs> over there, way over there in that corner. First, I mean, mix yourself a drink with your with your whiskey, with your bourbon that you love <laughs> so much. And then sit the fuck down. <laughs> it's just so weird to me that like he is very famous and very famously well employed as a writer. So does he think he's like standing up for I don't know. Shut up, James Patterson. He doesn't even write all his own books anymore cuz he has so many books to write. He has, like, farms them out to other people. Isn't that true? D- doesn't he collaborate with people? I'm sure. He's also, yeah. like, 400 years old. Sh- what is he even? James- he writes, like, crime, like, he, yeah. crime things. Yeah. It's Schlocky like crime things. Yes. It reminds me of, I think they were parodying him, I think, in that old Kids in the Hall sketch where the wife is, like, the husband finally finishes his book and uh, he presents it to the wife and then she opens it up and it just says boo and it scares the shit out of her. And she's like, you've done it again. <laughs> and then the next book is like, you have a spider on your shoulder. And she's like, ah! <laughs> oh no, the latest supply chain casualty is tampons? Oh, I did read that. There's a tampon shortage apropos Guys, of our get recent... get into my cup life. <laughs> I love it. It does take a little getting used to. Just it does putting take it a in. little. And some people are like me. They say it and just never worked for them. But do, just, have you tried the different sizes? Because yes. they're different sizes. And have you yeah. tried different cups? Because there are new yeah. cups that are different. People I don't love know. the new ones. I think I just you should try like different I ones. I can't keep making a $20 investment in something that feels like I'm putting a Home Depot bucket in my vag. Jesus Christ. But that's Casey. just, you know, I'm just saying, like, you know. Doesn't feel like that to me. I know you're so you know lucky. What? The, par- the thing that I love about it so much is that it feels to me like 
nothing, which yeah, is why that's so I like good. it. That's so good. I mean, I think that's so good. And you have like a very accepting vagina, maybe. I don't know. I mean, not like, historically speaking, but sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I have the same thing. I have like, if I don't put a, this, is this TMI? If I don't put a tampon in exactly right, it is very uncomfortable and Within minutes, I'll like get nauseous from like the way that it's yes. like pressing well, on my body. Well, that's the basal vagal yes. nerve thing yes. that yes. Kristen Bell talked about on Yes, Busy Tonight. On Busy Tonight. Rest the show. in peace. Rest in peace. Aww. Aww. Um, well, if you're having a hard time finding tamps, I'm sorry that we don't make any. <laughs> <laughs> but. Yeah, maybe the cup will work for you because I do know that it works wonders for for people that it works for. So that's so great. Let me ask you this, though. When mm-hmm. you take it out in a public restroom, what do you do? I don't take it out in a public restroom. What Why if would you I take ha- it out in a public restroom? Because if you it's can wear full. It for, you can wear it for 12 hours. Mm. You are You don't have to take it out in a public restroom. Trust. All right. I have yet to have that experience. Interesting. Okay. All right. These are questions that I have. Like, I don't know if I ever have. Mm. I maybe have. Maybe I have. And maybe. I don't know, though. I don't think so. Or maybe I, Or maybe it's been like one of those like fancy public restrooms like... Um, Where it's just one bathroom. Yes. And you can and you get your do, own sink. Do your private business. Mm-hmm. That's the best. I mean, you can do whatever you want in there. You can. Um, I used to work in a place that had bathrooms like that, and I would go uh, do stretches in there, and I called it toy lattes. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Casey, uh, do you know why free trials renew without your consent? Um, Because it's a scam and a trap. It's a scam! (laughs) It's a scam! (laughs) I'm so sick of the fucking scams. Everybody's out to get you with your money. Get your money with their scams. (laughs) And I'm just done with it. And that's why we love Truebill. You can download Truebill to take control of all of those subscriptions. It's a new app. It helps you identify and stop paying for subscriptions that you don't need, you never wanted. Or honestly, maybe you just like forgot about it because you were like, oh, I'm just going to sign up this thing for the free seven day trial so I can read this weird article. And then you forget about it. And then it's five years later and you've been paying $59 a year like me. I don't know. Maybe. Yeah, that happened. When we signed up for Truebill, to be honest, we found a couple things that like we didn't even know that we ever even signed up for a free trial. So maybe it's that we forgot or maybe it's just that we accidentally clicked on something. But that's how easy it is. It really is easy. They make it easy on purpose because it's a scam. Yeah. On average, people save up to $720 a year with Truebill. Think of what you could buy with $720. It's, you could buy a lot. Something better than a forgotten magazine subscription. That you're not even using. Right. And, you know, like these companies make it very difficult to get rid of these things. But Truebill makes it incredibly simple. You link your accounts. Truebill will cancel your unwanted subscriptions in one tap. And your Truebill concierge is there when you need them to cancel unwanted subscriptions so you don't have to deal with it. It's like having a personal assistant whose only job is to go through your accounts and make sure that you're not paying for shit you're not using. Come on. Except it doesn't judge you for being like, oh, here's that unused gym membership. Totally. (laughs) Truebill has over 2 million users and has helped save them over $100 million. What? That's amazing. (laughs) Guys, don't fall for subscription scams. Start canceling today at Truebill.com slash best. Go right now. Truebill.com slash best. It could save you hundreds every year. Truebill.com slash best. Honestly, it's been very stressful. 
these days. It's a stressful time, from what I hear, for everyone. I mean, it is. I'm here to tell you, anecdotally, I think that's true. I think it's a stressful time for everyone. And learning to manage daily stress and anxious thoughts is something that everybody wants and lots of people don't even know where to begin. Well, here's the deal. Noom Mood is here to help guide you to mental wellness and give you the tools you need to tackle stress so you'll feel empowered to take on whatever life throws at you. Guys, with Noom Mood, you take the journey to mental wellness one step at a time. They have a guided approach that teaches you the power of shifting your mindset in just a few minutes a day. They have a team of dedicated coaches, so you have a support system helping you on your journey. I mean, honestly, having better sleep, like feeling less stressed, having just coping mechanisms to use with stress is what's been the most helpful for me to feel happier and calmer and like less stressed out. For me, I'm just like a very logical person and moods are kind of like a mystery to me. So to be able to sort of figure out the reasons behind some of my moods and see them in a more logical light is magical. I totally get that. And That's why New Mood is so great. It's backed by science. They're lessons based on psychological principles that teach you about your relationship with stress and anxiety. They provide you with a variety of tools and techniques. That's what I always need. I need tools and techniques to try out and discover and figure out what works best for you. Plus, it's like daily curriculum coupled with a one-on-one coach that guides you and encourages you on your journey. And it's very convenient. It's only 10 minutes a day and you can do it wherever and whenever Whenever. you want. I mean, you can like literally do it at midnight if that's the time you've got. Worry less, feel happier. Sign up for your trial at noom.com slash best. That's noom, N-O-O-M, dot com slash best sign up for your trial today because what have you got to lose just stress that's all that's all you got to lose (laughs) who wants it no one (laughs) go to noom.com slash best and sign up for your trial today So I was really impressed with the way Lizzo handled a situation that she had this week. In case you haven't heard about it or read about it, um, some members of the disabled community came forward to point out to her that there is a word in one of her new songs that is considered by many in the disabled community to be a slur, a a bad word that we don't want to use anymore. And uh, I was really curious about how she would handle it, but she immediately put out an apology, which was very plainly worded, no equivocation. It's not my apology to accept, but as as apologies go, it looked good to me. And then pretty instantly, like, re-recorded a new lyric and replaced the song online, which I think was kind of incredible. I just, I really dig Lizzo. I admire her so much. I wonder if there are any artists that, like, ever um, apologize for their super misogynistic lyrics and then uh, rectify that in later years and like when they play their, you know, their shows like, and they sing their hits, if they change the lyrics so that, you know, like they're not like fucking a 16 year old. Yeah. That's a really good question. I'm just wondering, I'm just asking a question. Because I don't know any off the top of my head and maybe everyone listening, maybe, you know, someone that's like, Oh, I don't, uh, an artist that's like, I don't play that song anymore. But there, that is a frequent rabbit hole that I fall down where I just start actually reading the lyrics to songs that have just been in, you know, just in pop culture, super popular songs that I've loved over the years. And then realizing like they're basically describing crimes so many times. <laughs> 
like not even they're just describing crimes against other people (laughs) yeah they're really bad really bad oh my god we didn't even talk about britney spears wedding oh my god were you were you there flew in for it (laughs) i was just on the other side of drew bear i was like hiding under drew's cape so oh that's why you gosh. couldn't see me in the picture but yeah oh was, my gosh it was wild because like her her ex-husband like trying to crash it and then yeah, i didn't understand what that was all about i just felt like it was like so many people mm-hmm. accuse people of trying to do things for clout all the time online but i really felt like that was just for clout like that what is clout just what like mean? getting just like likes to, and being popular and, and just to get to say you did it yeah, kind and just of. to get like more followers and more people like on your social media, like following you. And I felt like that's what, because he like didn't he like live stream it or something, but also it was just terrible. Like I was like, oh, the security is not great at this wedding so far. Now I'm worried. I'm worried. But um, well. I hope she's happy. She seemed to be surrounded by friends. I know Paris Hilton said that. Um, she was invited to DJ uh, for the president and all the presidents of the world, but she chose to be at Britney's wedding instead because Britney is more important to her than all the presidents. Um, Wait, where were all the presidents? I don't know. That's what I was wondering. I was like, is there like um, a president, uh, a president con? <laughs> well, they do do that like weird thing, that gathering. That's like um, kind of secret, you know? <laughs> I Seriously. don't know. Yeah, it's like a, it's like the thing like that people go to, you get invited to it. Like, um, like the thinkers, like the leaders, the thought leaders, the fucking whatever. Oh my God. <laughs> Jesus Christ. It's like, uh, okay. It's not, it's like a retreat. It's a retreat. Okay. And hold on one second. I need to make sure Gina's not eating the maggots. Hold on. Okay. First of all, there is like this weird presidential retreat thing where like they invite like thinkers from around okay. the world. It's like a think tank, like a like a global think tank that happens. This is the thing that Paris was invited to was the Summit of the Americas on Thursday, June 9th. But President Joe Biden's Summit of the Americas. Okay. And she so said, that's, I, was, that's different. I was actually asked to DJ for the president and all of the other presidents from around the world for the dinner. But this was more important to me, she said, during her podcast. I didn't know she had a podcast. She does. I think everyone does. Yeah, I mean, for sure. 100%. Most people. Yeah. But I want to know about this thinkers thing. I want to I want to get invited to it. Well, my friend, my friends went one year. Okay. You know, my friend Andre, the political whiz kid who started that bank. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Um, Let's find out. Um, speaking of starting a bank. Yeah. So many people have sent me so many articles about how crypto is crashola and don't take financial advice from celebrities and more apes getting stolen and just everything. And I just want to say, I know I saw all that. I saw it. I saw- <laughs> oh, you we saw know. It. We know. <laughs> yeah. That's what we were saying <laughs> is that it's bullshit. <laughs> so, um, I'll be interested to see what happens with that. I mean, I interested slash sad because I feel I saw some guy was like, I put 30, I want to say he put $35,000. He tweeted that he put $35,000 into some kind of crypto account just to quote, play around with it. And like, he was like, it's $6,000 now. And I was like, yeah, that seems bad. That seems bad. I mean, I know investments go bad sometimes. I know it. But. I mean, but that's not. That's not. That seems worse than usual. 
I don't know. I'm no investor, but that seems worse. That seems the, like the opposite of how you would want your money to go. Yeah. I mean, I don't know anything about anything, uh, you think, at this point. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yes. I'm not being invited to any of those summits. But you know what? I can. What? I do think. I do think I can smell a scam. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't. And I'm like not into scams. You're not into any scams. Pe- I'm not into any scams. I'm not into people getting scammed. I'm not into scams. Period. And I just really, I don't know. Something about that crypto thing made me so grossed out because of the way that it was being pushed upon us. And like, where are those people? Oh, they're just radio silent, right? Like all those people with their fucking blee, 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 ladies, NFTs. Like, yeah. I haven't seen a fucking post about it. Yeah. On to the next. On to the fucking next. They got theirs. Good for them. Meanwhile, Casey and I are like, should we start a sub stack? <laughs> Would you guys like pay if we like had a sub stack so that we could like try to make some more money because we're fucking broke? <laughs> <sighs> Here's one thing I want to say is that like, oh gosh, this is like, is this a Hollywood break? We haven't had one in a while. Maybe. The thing that bums me out is that like, and <laughs> there was a time when no celebrity did anything without running it by their publicist. Truly. Like no celebrity would do anything that was like gonna hit the papers without saying to their publicist, like, let's talk out like how this could go. You know, like, let's talk out how this could be good for me or bad for me or what, you know, for better or for worse. Like, that's how much thought, in my opinion and in my experience, how the conversations would go. There were always conversations about making decisions. And now I think maybe because of, like, social media or whatever, celebrities feel, like, autonomous and kind of like there are there are their own publicists. I don't think it has to do with social media. I think it has to do with, I think it has to do with literally money. Yeah. And like how, and how like the industry has changed money wise and actually exactly the fucking thing that I just said about like, I only do eight episodes. I used to do 24, 23, 23, whatever. Like, I mean, it truthfully, it was like, 24 the first year but then the second year is 23 (laughs) anyway it doesn't matter but my point being like the industry has changed from top to bottom the entertainment industry and especially like how much performers get paid so like doing things with brands and commercially whereas it used to be like no fucking way if you were a movie star now or even like a TV star, really. Now people are just like you. It, it was like considered very schlocky. Like right. it was like not, not looked upon like it was like a classy thing to do if you were a real artist, right? You know. And then you'd see like we would always be so shocked when like Dick Clark would do like a special that showed all of the foreign commercials that like really big movie stars and TV stars would do in other countries because we'd be like, oh my God, such and such a movie star did like a wine commercial or like a pickle commercial in Japan, a a car commercial. Yeah. People would like make fun of them. It was so shocking. Because, because it wasn't like Matthew McConaughey doing like the Lincoln Town Car commercials is like, like that would have been unheard of. Right. Right, 15 right. years ago. Right. There's no fucking way. And so, you know, anyway, the point that I was trying to make about like the NFTs or whatever is that like celebrities, as we've said a number of times, are given a lot of things, are like, you know, shoes, a jacket, whatever. And the hope is, as Busy's discussed many times, you'll wear the shoes on your Instagram or you'll wear the jacket to an award show or whatever. And that's good for the brand. And but a lot wh- of times I do. <laughs> You do. You really do share yeah. a lot of the, a lot of the things that people share with you, and and, and sometimes like, I buy them like my Medi Petty. Yes, exactly, exactly. Um, and I know that's like a whole separate conversation when people are like, "Why do rich people get given free things?" And I'm like, "It's good marketing for that company. It's like 
you know, it's a good commercial for that company. And so it's worth it to them to try to do that. Blah, 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 blah. But anyway, my point is a jacket or a pair of shoes, it would be under some really weird circumstances where that would hurt anyone that was like, hey, I saw George Clooney wearing this jacket. I want that same jacket. It'd have to be like a really wild circumstance where that jacket hurt you. But with NFTs, I feel like <laughs> I feel like they were basically swag that was given to a bunch of celebrities who were like, this is so great. And they were told it was going to be worth tons of money. And like, this is so great. But like it, that actually, when people went out and bought it to be like celebrities, that's where the problem was. Because it's not just a pair of shoes. It's like your life savings. Well, it was an investment. Right. And it's the same thing that we literally said when we went back to the like Paris Hilton, Jimmy Fallon conversation. Right. Which is like Paris Hilton. No actor has ever gone on a late night talk show and talked about their like investment portfolio. Right. Like stocks that they're currently investing in. Right. Yeah. So all this to say, Substack? (laughs) Garage sale? (laughs) Yeah, I say let's do it all. Let's, let's do it all, guys. Who's let's... in? <laughs> um, but I do have to go because I'm going to go get my nails, my fingernails done. Oh, okay. Should I get long ones again? Or should I keep um, them short? That's up to you. Um, I don't know. What do you want to, what are you feeling? You don't know. Maybe I'll get long ones again. All right. We will see. <laughs> well, um, we didn't say what we're doing our best at this week. The one rule of the podcast. What are you doing your best at this week? Well, I'm just trying to like work this refrigerator, I guess, into my like office plan. And, uh, you know, and it might be beyond my skills. And, um, and I'm going to try to make it up to my husband for having a fight with him about a fork that was on the counter. I'll let you know how that goes. If I what do does my that best look like it. for you? Are you just like, hey, earlier that was stupid. I'm sorry. I mean, we were both being stupid. So oh, like, sure. I have to let my side go mm-hmm. without waiting. You know what I mean? Like, if he wants to still be mad at it, he can he can be mad about it, but so I just have to let my half go. But I think we're we're good. I think we'll we'll overcome it. Okay, I'm trying to do my best this week at giving myself a fucking break. I think about that's all the good. things. Yeah, I think that's good. I do too. I'm like, it's a lot. Like, you know, yeah, it's all so much for all of us. And I'm just trying to, like, go easy on myself when I get into my head of, like, gah, I should have, blah, 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 you know, whatever. Yeah. I'm just trying to be cool with myself. Yeah. Like, for instance. Yeah. I, like, really wanted to, like, work out every day this past week and, like, not drink rosé. <laughs> because not for any reason other than like, because I'm doing Seth's show tomorrow night. Yeah. And I just was like, I want to like feel good in my body and in the clothes that I'm wearing. Sure. But then that didn't happen. Yeah. And instead of being like really upset about it right now, I'm choosing to just be nice to myself and just be like, yeah. Yeah. Because this week was kind of stressful and so you didn't make it to work out every day and, you know, my friend Sims here and we had some rosés and... Yeah. Sims the kind of friend you have rosé with. Like, that's just fucking life, man. A sans-air with a friend. Yeah. What's a sans-air between friends, you know? (laughs) May I offer you one thing? Yeah. Yeah. I think that, and I think this is good for you, and I think it's good for me. I think we have to stop making absolutes with ourselves. Oh, my like, God. Yes. I Work out every day? No. Yeah, 
that doesn't leave any room for making another choice. And absolutely no rosé doesn't leave any room. So what about saying, like, I want to work out five times. I want to try to make it to five times. But remember when I used to work out every day? I do. And remember how it hurt your body and wore you out eventually and then you I don't know if it did that I just know it's a uh, also it's just a fucking different time I just am not yeah. living that fucking life right like you know right I'm not there it doesn't right. exist anymore right so just how about a lot less rosé than you know not rosé every day but maybe I'm going to let myself have two rosés this week and let let me pick my special occasions or whatever. Like, I just think that that's like so many times I'm like, you know, I'm cutting this out of my life or I'm adding this 100% to my life. And it's just like, it's not realistic. Like anything that you want to do, you have, you know, yeah, adding or subtracting has to be in moderation, you know, like. This I have to come to terms with the fact that like my new closet systems aren't going to change my life, but they might make them a little bit better. I know. I guess that's like the thing, right? That's hard. What you just said, like your closet systems aren't going to change your like I, I do, I do fall into that so easily. I do. Where I'm too. just like, I'm like, th- this is it, and then it's going to be smooth sailing from here. But it's not. It's just not like that. Like, fucking ever. Right. And it's hard, you know? For me, like, just trying to focus on not beating myself up in my head yeah, is the best I can do right now, you know? Yeah. Um. I think that's good. And I think like probably giving yourself a little break from exercise and allowing yourself a little glass of wine, hopefully made it easier. (laughs) I mean, they haven't been, they haven't been little glasses, (laughs) but also like I have been working out by the way, I have been like back on the workout train and I've been feeling really good. It just hasn't been the regimented, like every fucking day I'm going to blah, like, you know, a couple of days, like last week, I like got the time wrong on a thing. So I did like 20 minutes and then I was like, oh shit, I'm supposed right. to be on this call. Right. So then I just like didn't go back to the workout after, but I did 20 minutes. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it's just not like I keep searching or I keep, I, I think I have been, I think I have been holding myself back a little bit by thinking that there's going to be like a, a, a flip will be, a switch will be flipped. Yes. Not a, not a flip will be switched. A switch will be flipped and I will just like be back to a version of myself that like A, doesn't exist anymore. B, isn't possible. And C, like wasn't very happy anyway. Right. In other right. ways. So it's like, I'm just trying to like, ride that wave baby yeah you know what it reminds me so much of it reminds me of like and tell me if you were like this when you were a kid didn't you sort of like over the summer always fantasize about like who you were gonna be the like new you, were you. be a new oh my god the like new you're you. gonna grow taller or yes. lose weight or like not have freckles this year or Wait, whatever the fuck did did i write this story in my book where probably i was like so excited to go between sixth and seventh grade in the summer, yeah. my mom finally let me get contacts and I had worn uh, glasses forever. Yes, yeah. And then I like went like strolled into homeroom and was like, everybody's going to notice like this is so different. I look so different. This is wild. Yeah. And this kid that I'd like was a good like a friend of mine and I'd gone to school with since first grade was like, hey, what's up? Da, da, da. And I was like, I mean... <laughs> hi, don't I look different? And he was like looking at my face and he's like, no. And I'm like, I'm not wearing glasses. And he was like, oh, yeah, I guess that's right. You did wear glasses. Like it didn't even occur to it. Like it was like, he didn't, you know. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So I'm, I'm like, that's been my habit my whole life. And I have been focusing so much on, 
just a series of choices that I thought were going to like change my life, but they're always like extreme. And I'm always like, yeah, I'm going to work out every day or I'm going to read a novel every day or I'm going to whatever. I'm going to clean one room in my house every day, you know, and it's just like, it's impossible. It's impossible. But 80%, that's pretty great. You know, 80% of what I was committing to is a B. I'll take it. Where do we get these ideas from? Who is who sold us this fucking bill of goods? Other um, than men. Magazines. <laughs> I think. Magazines. And I think like, you know, older women that have like deeply ingrained self-loathing from years of patriarchy, probably. Yeah. That's you what know? I want to. That's why I'm like trying to let go of so much of the shit. Cause I'm like, yeah. why, why do I feel this way? What yeah. is it? Like, where is it coming from? Where yeah. is it coming from? And then I like realize like it is, yeah, so much of it deeply ingrained patriarchal fucking bullshit, like about the kind of mother I should be, the kind of person I should be, the kind of like what I should look like, like how right. I should be able to juggle all these fucking things, show up for everything, da, 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 whatever, like all this stuff that I've like, you know, anyway, my point being. I get it. I get it. Before we go, I want to recommend one thing to you that I think you might enjoy a show yes. if you have time to watch. Is an it episode. my brilliant friend? No. Because you did, you, we, uh, <laughs> you already did that. <laughs> no, I would like you to check out um, Love on the Spectrum on Netflix. Oh my There's, God, you're not the only person who has said this to me. <laughs> so it's like, a, um, it's, uh, I th- believe a UK reality show that's had a couple seasons. They did an American season. And um, I just think it's really interesting. And obviously, like, I know that these folks are highly functioning people who have, um, some have autism, some have Asperger's, uh, some I think have, have some other diagnoses. Um, but it's just, it's really super interesting. And I, I, I think it does a good job of telling their stories and, um, letting them tell their own stories, but it's really interesting. And I think that you would, appreciate it and i'm curious to hear what other people think oh i would Um, love to watch it yeah also that just reminded me of a song from girls five eva um that makes me laugh yeah and the soundtrack to girls five eva is out is out yes and it's so fucking good and i was listening to it and i'm like obsessed with it okay tell me what song well the that song that you just reminded me of, I don't think is on the soundtrack because oh, okay. that song is Your Eyes Tell Me a Story of How Our Love Can Can Be or something like that. Yeah. My eyes tell us a story. And then it turns out that she accidentally just like ripped it off from a children's show. Oh yeah. That episode. Yes, yes. Um okay. So Thinking About Myself is, like, one of my favorite songs of all time. And it's yes. Renee's song where she's, like, When I cry at a movie, I'm really crying about myself. Only sad that... Okay, we know that. Yeah. Then um, the Larry song is the one that Sarah and I did together where I was like, oh, are we the Indigo Girls now? Right. Um, and I think it's so good. Ingrid Michelson has the New York City Moms song that's so yes, funny about so like, good. Um, and then BPE is Big Pussy Energy and yes. it's so fucking good. And Ben Not Break, also so good. And then At The Beep is so good. And then also Can't Wait to Wait is the song that Summer and Kev recorded back when they were teenagers. Right. And it's stupid. Um, oh, and Momentum. And who you know. Guys, so many good songs on the so soundtrack. So many good songs on there. And the the full series is out. So if you haven't watched Girls 5 Eva yet, you have to do that. And I believe, I think in a couple days, um, 
Rutherford Falls is also um, premiering on Peacock, if I'm correct. Our friend Jana Schmeeding, who's been on the podcast, is the star of that show on Peacock. So you have two. And we're going to have the showrunner on at some point. But yes, we just Sierra have to schedule it. Teller Ornelas. We have to have Sierra, who's uh, great and beloved in the comedy community. We have to have her on. But um, yeah, so check out Jana. I know you all loved her when she was. Uh, when she was on the show, so you can see her in season two of Rutherford Falls. I know there's while you're so over many, there, yeah, because there are so many fucking TV shows. Like even I am like, this feels like a bit. Like it feels like <laughs> you're just, you know what I mean. Like it just feels yeah. like it's like fake. How many TV yeah. shows there are? Like, did you even know that like Chris Rock was on Fargo? He's like the lead oh. of Fargo. No, I yeah. did not know that. Oh yeah. I saw the poster, like I was like flipping through my streaming services looking for something (laughs) and I saw the like, you know, one sheet of like Chris Rock in Fargo and I was like, that's like from a movie. That's That's photoshopped. Yeah. That's weird. What? Yeah. Like, there's so apparently much I don't know. brilliant on it. Like, of course he is. Like, everybody's brilliant on every show. I mean, Fine. But Girls 5 Eva is really funny and really great. And I love it. And I love doing it. And Rutherford Falls is really great. And it's just like, we want to support women. Women. Doing amazing period. things. Yeah. Women. And while after you're done, Girls 5 Eva and Rutherford Falls, then maybe check out Love on the Spectrum. because oh, I'm think checking it out. It's interesting. You're the second person who said it to me. Oh, interesting. Okay. There's a guy on there, Steve, and I would love it if he were to be a podcast guest one day because, well, you'll see. I just love him so okay. much. I'm in. All right, guys. Got to go get my nails done. <laughs> we love you oh, so much. Shit. My laser. <laughs> Damn it. That um, laser's doomed. We sh- love you. Don't say it. <laughs> love you guys. We and we'll talk you. to you soon. We love you. Substack? Bye. Yeah. <laughs> Let us know. Bye. What you think. Bye. <laughs>